don't wanna let you know you're so hypnotic magical go 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 go
Let me show you something.
Sip ace that super bass got boom, boom. Got me gay live on Kurt Cobain, boom, boom. Sip ace that super bass got boom, boom. Got me gay live on Kurt Cobain, boom, boom. Sip ace that.
don't wanna let you know you're so hypnotic magical go 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 Number 23, Sam Byrne. A senior on defense from Andover. Number 29, Matt Bellucci. Senior on attack from Sudbury, Massachusetts. Number 33, Hayden Fry. A sophomore on defense from Situate, Massachusetts. Number 34, Jack Thompson. And a senior on attack from Briarcliff Manor, New York. Number 41, Keaton McCann. Head coach of the Dutchmen is Derek Witherford. Starting lineup for Tufts on attack, a senior from Chatham, New Jersey, number 14, Matt Bradall. Junior from Madison, Connecticut, number 23, Tony Swank. And a junior from Toronto, number 28, Jack Boyden. At midfield for the Bows. Graduate student, Cohasset, Massachusetts, number 21, Taggart Eimer. Face-off man's a freshman from Bethesda, Maryland, number 22, Parker Merrill. And a senior from Wilton, Connecticut, number 55, Joe Murtha. On defense for the Bows, a senior from Pittsburgh, New York, number 15, Trevor Hall. A freshman from Denver, number 27, Joey Waldbaum. And a junior from San Mateo, California, number 44, Kyle Allman. And goal for the Bows is a sophomore from Melbourne, New York, number 19, Connor Garzone. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please rise and move your hats as we honor America and those who support our freedom at home and abroad with the playing of our national anthem. sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and fans. We request your cooperation in supporting the student athletes and officials in a positive manner. Hello, and welcome to Bellow Field for this evening's men's lacrosse matchup between the number seven Union College Dutchman and the number three Tufts University Jumbos. I'm Joe Schmidt here with Kyle Amate. Both teams come in without a loss, but only one will leave tonight undefeated in this Liberty, Liberty League versus NESCAC showdown. Union opened conference play last Friday with a narrow 13 to 10 victory over number 10 ranked St. Lawrence, while Tufts continued their dominance over the weekend, trouncing Trinity 21 to 10 to move to 6 and 0 on the year and 3 and 0 in the NESCAC. Kyle, what are some keys to the game we can expect to see as the Jumbos take on, in the words of Coach Dinolfo, the best team they've seen so far this year? Well, Joe, Coach Dinolfo is right. This is a battle-tested Union team whose defense has stifled opponents all season. Their group is senior heavy, and they will need to rely on their senior leadership for their biggest test to date. For the Jumbos, the key is following the same formula they have followed all season. 
Union is a team that likes to slow down the pace of the game. So the Jumbos will look to push transition even more than usual, which is saying a lot. The Tufts defense, on the other hand, has had some slow starts this season. So they need to keep Hayden Frey and this Dutchman offense quiet. Stopping the Jumbo offense will really test the Union defense as Mac Bradle and his accomplices are the best shooters that the Dutchmen have seen all year. It should be a good one, Joe. Nice and physical out here on Bellow Field on a cold afternoon. Cold indeed, and we're getting ready for the first faceoff between Parker Merrill and, and it looks like a violation will give the ball to the Union College Dutchman to open up our game tonight. Titus swings it down, Edelman slips. Here comes, and Union has Duff's defense hung up for now. They'll reset with the midfield. Here comes Peter Kipp, number 13. Over number six, Brian Davis, the senior captain. He'll dodge inside to the right. Swing it out to the wing. Shot goes high, backed up by Union. Yep, number 20, Kieran McGovern on Union has been a leader of this team. He can really shoot it from outside and they're definitely looking for him to get open looks. Peter Burns with the backup over to Kip, dodging against the Tufts captain, Mirtha. Good defense so far by Mirtha and it'll force him down towards GLE. Burns swings it back up top to McGovern. Yep, Union is playing a very patient offense. They are a low scoring team and they like it that way. Sturm guarding now and Davis shot, saved by Garzon, scooped up by Edelman. He'll get it to Waldbaum to start the clear. Here's Trevor Hall. And so far, Union managing to slow down any Tufts transition, forced them to have a clear. Trevor yeah. Hall drops it. Ground ball. Yeah, Quite the, the scramble. The clearing clock nearly out. Waldbaum will get it over. No, he will, no, he not, will not in time. Tufts turns it over, taking more than 20 seconds to clear the ball. Union with a successful first ride, and they'll get the ball back on offense. Yeah, the rides and clears have been so crucial to the Tufts Jumbo success this season. Union clearly did a little homework um, with a great ride, great pressure there. Really forced Trevor Hall into a difficult position. Senior midi Jack Donahue on for the Union Dutchman, as well as Zach Davis in the midfield. Here's Davis up top now. Back over to Donahue and back to Davis, guarded by Sam Sturm for the Jumbos. He'll try to move to the inside, good defense, but, but he does manage to get to the middle. Gives it out to Fry. And the Dutchman will reset up top with Donahue. Donahue dodging inside, tries to get a shot away, deflected. He will go down into the crease, called for it, and it'll be Jumbo's ball. Yeah, very intelligent uh, defense there by Timmins. Kind of forced his man into the crease, drew the call, and the Jumbos look to clear again. Let's see if they can do a little different this time. Here's Garzon bringing it up nearly to halfway. He'll swing it back over to Edelman, taking a hit from Bert. Edelman's pass, knocked down, but he does well to, ball's on the ground. Waldbaum does well to scoop it up in the end. For a minute, no one knew where it was, and this time Waldbaum will fling it down the field again. Intercepted by the Dutchman defense, and now running in transition is Matt Belouche. Belouche makes a move to the inside of the field, and wisely chooses to slow it up with his offense. Yep, Belush, the Andover, Massachusetts native. One thing about Union is they've got almost half their team from Massachusetts, and you can see with a big away crowd. Yeah, and we're definitely seeing a third Union possession so far. Fry absolutely harassed on the ground right now, and it is put on the ground by the Jumbos defense, but a penalty will go against the Jumbos. That's number three, Jack Reed on the defense. Yep. Yeah, man down. Opportunity early for the Jumbos. Union certainly has to be happy with how they've started this game, really riding hard. And, you know, if you play hard and hustle like that, you will draw penalties. will be interesting to see how they test this man down defense and Connor Garzon, who has been very hot of recent in net. Yeah, so it looks like it will be an offside penalty on Lewis Timmons. So a man off opportunity to start the game for the Union Dutchman. This is a great opportunity for them. As you said, they've been riding great so far. Tufts yet to have a settled offensive possession. They'll swing it around the back, over to Fry. Fry up top to Burns, all the way over. Burns again. Down to, and a shot saved by Garzon. Jake Mabardi on the shot, who will back it up. Yeah, Union's looking to move it up top and then force those low corners. They got a great look, but 
It looks like uh, Mabardi just hesitated a little too much. Garzon was able to recover and here's make a Keaton. great save. Here's Keaton McCann. Passes it inside, and there's a goal for Union. Number 20, Kieran McGovern, scores against Tufts to open the, sc open the scoring here at Bello. 1-0 Union with, four, with nearly three minutes gone. Yeah, you'd think that the Tufts man down defense would have adjusted after that first chance from Mabardi, but they keep attacking the small, or attacking the short corner, and the skip pass gets through to McGovern, who finishes it with ease. McGovern has a lot of experience here. That is something he will tuck away most times. Yeah, so four Union possessions before one for the Jumbos, as we're back at the faceoff X. It's a big faceoff here. Parker Merrill has the clamp. It comes all the way out towards the defensive zone of the Jumbos, and controlled well by Michael Ayers. He'll get it to Joey Waldbaum, who looks to move in transition. Yeah, Ayers has been really impressive so far in his freshman campaign. Great on the ground balls. Here's Cam Keller just darting through defense. Has it dislodged by almost four. Waldbaum thinks about the shot. Good pass inside. Shot and a goal for the Jumbos. Camdell Cristo, he has been hot of recent. A defensive midfielder who really likes to play in transition and stay on the field. He continues his run. That's the third straight game he scored in. And the Jumbos have tied it up. Joe, they can attack so quickly, can't they? Yeah, and speaking of staying on the field, what a great job by Joey Waldbaum there. Faking the shot up top with his long pole before intelligently pulling it down and finding a wide open Del Cristo to tie up the game at one yeah. on the Jumbo's first real possession. Donahue did not Merrill wins it chance. forward, scoops up the ground ball himself. Merrill under a lot of pressure. Ball does go out on the ground. And it looks like it will be scooped up by the Dutchman. That's the long stick mid midfielder Clint Gordeau with the turnover, with the cause turnover. Union is able to get the clear. And they will set it up with number 41, Keaton McCann. So another possession for the Dutchman after the turnover by Merrill. Yeah, though the Dutchmen have had lots of possession, they haven't really gotten any great looks off of Dodge. It will be interesting to see who the offensive initiators are for this Union team. Yeah, in comes the senior, Matthew Georgiades. And they'll bring it back down. Here's Justin Green, dodging against Michael Ayers. He gets on side, rolls back to his right, doubled well by Edelman. Georgiades again, able to bump off Sturm for now. Over to Burns. Burns gets inside, gets a shot and scores. Burns is fired up after scoring, beating his man, tucking into the bottom corner. And Union leads 2-1. Yeah, that's Burns' 15th goal of the year that ties him for lead on the team for the Dutchman. And he surprisingly beat Kyle Edelman, who was one of the most solid one-on-one -on -one defenders on this Jumbo's defense, which just goes to show what a good team Union is and the talent they are ready to bring here on Bellow Field. Yeah, they've been really patient so far in offense. Let's see who gets the face off here. Another ground ball scrum. Looks like it will be controlled by Taggart Eimer and the Jumbos. Eimer able to evade the ride, and he will clear it. Let's see if the Jumbos will have to set up a more settled possession here. They haven't had much possession at all so far, Kyle. No, they have not, but it looks like they're going to get into their sets, probably sub off the defensive personnel. But as you know, they love to keep them on as long as possible. Here's Kelleher swing back to his left hand. Now to the right. He'll take it around GLE, pushed away well. Bradle behind the cage, over to Boyden. Yeah, not often the first time we mentioned Bradle is five minutes into the game. Here comes Taglia Ferry, the freshman, dodging back to his right. Nothing there for now. Really tough There's defense there by Titus. He's a great defensive midfielder. Keller gets a shot away, saved by Donahue. Way up in the air, and it will go out of bounds, but Donahue gets the backup. So Union will get the ball back off the save from Do save and backup from Donahue. Dan Donahue, four-time Liberty Defensive Player of the Week so far this season. Yeah, he's playing great so far. Uh, really an anchor of this Dutchman defense, only allowing 7.3 goals per game. And the Dutchmen do get the clear with Titus. So they'll be able to set up another possession here with Fry. And Kieran McGovern's back on the field. A little bit of a hidden ball trick. And McGovern gets it back up top. Yeah, look for, McGovern, look for McGovern to attack the short stick matchup here. Del Cristo, the freshman on him. He does get topside. Able to get a shot away. Backed up by Burns. Runs right into Trevor Hall. Bit of a commotion going on on the field. Look like Hall is a little bit shaken up. Michael Ayers will give him some relief. 
Doesn't look too serious though, which is a, always a good thing. Yeah, in the end, just a little bit of incidental contact after the shot, and Burns will restart it on the end line. So Burns up to Peter Kip. Kip will look to attack against the captain, Murtha. He'll go to his left, down the alley, tries to roll back, good defense by Murtha, keeping him down the alley. Kip up top, swings it one more. McGovern with the shot, saved by Garzon. Eaten up there, and the Jumbles will get another possession if they can clear, which this time they do with Lane. Yeah, often you see Connor Garzon after he makes his save uh, throw a big looping pass up towards the midfield. It seems like Union has scouted that pretty well as their offensive midfielders went straight back to play defense to defend that clear. Kelleher dodging hard, passes over to Swank. Swank with the shot, scores, and it's two to two. Yep. Able to beat Donahue low that time. That'll be big for the Jumbo's confidence. They haven't had many possessions, but when they have, they've scored on a, on a good number of them. Certainly, yeah, Tommy Swank, he's filling in for the injured Kurt Brun on attack, and he's really relished his opportunity. Swank has been scoring a lot in his most recent games. He had two last, uh, last time against Trinity, and he's really known as a shooter, so if he can get good feeds like that from Kelleher, he will have a field day. Yeah, and that's a great dodge and pass from up top by Kelleher. Creating his own space, couldn't get the shot away, but found a great pass. Back to the faceoff, Merrill wins it up into the air. And it looks like Michael Ayers will be able to come up with it for the Jumbos. He's got such a great nose for the ball. Really, really effective on these faceoffs. Looking a little like a fish out of water on the offensive end, however. And it is picked off by Dan Donahue, the goalie, who throws a bad pass to Titus. Bradle gets it back, but a whistle goes. Oh. A push in the back, bails out Dan Donahue and the Union Dutchman, and they'll get the ball back to try to clear again. Absolutely saved by the ref. I don't know if that's a real push in the back. Goal was wide open. That would have been automatic for Bradle. Either way, the Union Dutchman get it back and look to evade the ride. Doing well are the Jumbos, though, and Ayers causes the turnover. It rolls out of bounds, and it will go to Jumbos. Great play by Michael Ayers, who's been all over the field so far to start this game. Yeah, he has. And Joe, usually on these uh, clearing opportunities, you want the uh, clearing team to go to the other side of the field, away from the substitution box where all the traffic is. There, um, it looked like Ryan Pugliese just kind of ran into too many bodies. Couldn't here's, get by. Here's Jack Boyd and operating on Titus, the short stick. He gets a shot away from it, the ground, ducks it into the top left corner. What a great goal from Boyden. He'll take advantage of that short stick matchup all day, even if it's Titus. Jack Boyden is must-see TV. This guy can shoot it from any angle, any position. He scored a goal on his knees earlier in the season. This one on his butt, but it really doesn't matter. He's Canadian. He's got the sticky stick skills. Really knows what he's doing. What a beautiful shot. And the Jumbos now have the lead. Yeah, so for with seven minutes remaining in this first quarter, the Jumbos have the lead for the first time in the game as we return to the faceoff dot. This time, Parker Merrill is able to scoop up his own ground ball. And he's start, he's been looking good at the faceoff X so far. Yeah, he has. Usually the starter is Aiden Hesse, who's out with an injury today. Parker, a freshman, has been playing well all season, getting a lot of reps. That's got to be big for the confidence. Here's Swank. Gets a shot away from a speculative angle, but it is backed up by Bradle, so no problem there. And they'll sub in some of the second midfielders. Looks like Kevin Christmas coming in, as well as Garrett Kurtz and Cole Salton for the Jumbos. Here's Boyden up on the wing again. He'll swing it over to Salton. Salton dodging hard down the alley, hedge there. Good defense by the Union. Slide does come, Salton still has it somehow in one hand in his left hand, gets the shot away. Tufts does get the backup despite a great effort by Dan Donahue. Now behind the cage is Bradel. Bradel slips, puts his hand in the crease, and Union will create the turnover at long last. Yep, usually you don't see that from Mac Bradle, always very solid from behind the net. Uh, Union has done a great job at neutralizing him though, we really haven't called his name at all. No, but the Jumbles still lead three to two. Union does want to go here if they want to tie the game up again. Waldbaum on ball, now over, now Lane. Here's McGovern against Lane. McGovern dodging all the way from the top, Lane on an island, doing a great job so far. He'll swing it over to Brian Davis, the captain. Davis against Murtha, gets to the inside of the field. Slide comes. Kevin Christmas looks like he'll be able to sell off now. Matt Lane on McGovern again. Over to Kip. 
Kip guarded by Del Cristo, the freshman. Yep, Kip's not let, not afraid to let it fly. Pass inside, hacked to the head, and Burns finishes it through the contact. We'll wait and see what the call is. Goal is good. Union ties it three to three. Off a nice feed from the top. By, I believe it was Brian Davis. Yeah, if there's been any theme to this Union offense so far, it's been skip passes from the top down to these low corners have been very effective. Uh, exhibit A right there, great goal from Burns. Burns is a great finisher. Um, he had four goals and two assists last week against St. Lawrence, product out of the River School in Massachusetts. Kid can play. Yeah, it looks like a penalty will go against Edelman for the slash. You could hear that hack from all the way over here. Donolfo cannot believe the call, looking like the player may have fallen in the goal mouth. But either way, the goal stands. It's 3-3, three to three, and Tufts will have to contend with a man down faceoff now. You will never get away with a call if it is that loud <laughs> against the helmet. That said, Parker Merrill able to win it. So Huge the freshman face. really just eating up the faceoffs now after a tough start, and he'll get into the offensive end. He's got to be careful here. Checked from behind, but it looks like a timeout was well called by the Tufts coaching staff. So they get the timeout away to save possession. 5.26 remaining in this first quarter. Score is 3-3. Three to three. So the Dumbos will have to do some work to keep possession, try to kill off this penalty on Kyle Edelman. Meanwhile, the Union Dutchmen certainly have had the majority of possessions so far, especially due to their very potent ride. Um, that said, it's no longer showing on the scoreboard as the Jumbo's offense has really come to life. Yeah, Jumbo's offense, you know, it comes to life as a very relative term, Joe, because you know, often we've seen at this point in the game, they've got seven or eight on the board. Uh, however, when they have gotten the ball on offense, they really are relying on just such talented players like Boyd and Kelleher to make plays. Bradel hasn't gotten his name on the score sheet yet, but he will. It's only inevitable. Uh, in terms of running out this penalty, expect Union to probably double team the ball, um, try to take it away. I'm guessing they're gonna put it in the hands of one of their midfielders, maybe Taglia Ferry, he's a great athlete, or Kelleher or Bradel. You got your, your sport for choice here. Yeah, to your point, aren't, there aren't many coaches in the country that would be unhappy with three goals in nine minutes, but Coach Dinolfo might be one of them. Um, as you said, often seven or eight by the end of the first quarter. It does not quite look like it may end up that way. Oh, but you never still know. plenty of time left. Come on, five minutes, 30 seconds left, Joe. They could put up 10. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Dinolfo wouldn't mind it at all. No, he and wouldn't. Neither would these, this Tufts offense. But Let's, looking back to Coach Witherford on Union, he has to be satisfied with the way that they have been playing in the middle of the field, been picking up big ground balls, riding and clearing very well. And it's shown itself on the offensive end, which is not, I would say, a Union's strong suit. Uh, however, when you have the ball for that long. And a good call by you. Here's Taglia Ferry against Titus. Union opting not to double the ball, so it looks like Tufts may just run out the clock. Taglia Ferry probing. He'll go to his right. Does get inside, the free slide there comes. Back to Bradle, passed in front to Boyden, knocked down, and a lot of contact between two Tusk players there. Meanwhile, Union does get the clear, and they will have about 30 seconds of a man off opportunity. Passed inside, thrown away by the long pull, and Tufts will get it back. So an uncharacteristic mistake by Union, not slowing the game up, and Clint Gordeau turns it over. Here's Garzone on the clear, over to Murtha. Back across the field to Joey Waldbaum. Waldbaum absolutely puts Fry on his butt and clears it for the Jumbos. And he'll get it to Boyden. Waldbaum looking comfortable in the offensive end so far. Oh yeah, Waldbaum's got great stick skills, just like his older brother Max at Jacksonville. Here's been... Kelleher on a sweep. Gets all the way across the field before shuffling it back behind and turning it over. And yeah, as you were saying, Waldbaum taking something out of his older brother Max's book. Yeah, certainly. And Back to the Jumbo's offense here. A lot of uncharacteristic turnovers. We saw Bradle force a maybe low percentage feed uh, on the man down. And then Kelleher there gets it checked on the pass. Union has lived up to their name as a great defensive team. And it shows why they've only let up 10 goals one time this season. Here's Davis looking to clear with only three seconds left. He slings it all the way down. A good pass a down to McCann. Pass. And that'll give a possession to the Union Dutchman. A much needed possession right here. That said, it goes right back to the Jumbos after an offside. So an error in the substitution game by the Dutchman, and the Jumbos get it back. 
before immediately throwing it away. Boyden is able to collect it, so the Jumbos will get a possession right here as Kelleher runs onto the field. He'll bring it in and attack against the pole. Down to his right hand. Tries to get inside. Probing here is Kelleher. Slings it back out. Can't be brought in. Yeah. Taglia Ferry will chase it down, but it's going to go out of bounds, and Fry will pick it up for the Dutchman. Yeah, Timmins, uh, the recipient of the feed there, usually defensive midfielder, just didn't look ready for that one. Uh, and that's sort of the downside of keeping these defensive midfielders on for a long time. Um, you got to get your offensive personnel on at some point. There yeah. it shows. So here's Kip against Timmins. Kip probing up top. He'll swing it over to McGovern, the lefty. Checked by Taglia Ferry. Kip gets to his left hand, gets a shot away and scores. Not afraid to let it fly, as we've said. Kip, one of the leaders on this team in shots. Hasn't been shooting well so far this season, but he buries that one, and Union leads once more. Yeah, that's a great shot on the run there. As Kip moves towards the middle of the field, he shoots it on that far side, bottom corner against Garzon. That's a really tough save to make. Um, and Kip, like you said, he takes a lot of shots. That one was super accurate and puts the jumbos behind. So back to the faceoff X where it's been all Parker Merrill for the last three or four. He's up in there against Pilato. This one a real grinder. Pilato manages to scoop it out, but it's Sam Sturm who was onto it first, and Pilato does manage to scoop it. Stays inbounds by the skin of his teeth, and it will get to the long stick midfielder. Back in the air again, and finally collected by Union. But thrown away once again. Trevor Hall looking to chase it down for the Jumbos. He can't bring in the ground ball, but Edelman can. That's one of his specialities. Yes, it is. And he'll swing it over to Waldbaum once more. Now that's a good little hockey pass there from Hall. Did play hockey in high school, and he gets it to Edelman. So the Jumbos will get another possession here. Here's Bradle operating from up top this time. As you said, we haven't really said his name too much. Let's see if he can get something going right here. Yeah, he's going against Puglisi, who's one of Union's best on-ball defenders, uh, maybe discouraging Bradle a little bit from dodging. Either way, here's a dodge from Boyden. Behind the back, and he scores! A beautiful goal from Jack Boyden, taking it up, looking, faking the question mark, and then going behind his back to increase the angle. Great goal for the Jumbos. He is such a crafty dodger and shooter. It looked like Donahue didn't even expect a shot on that one, bounced right off, the, off of his thigh into the net. And it just show, goes to show just how talented these uh, jumbo attackmen are. Yeah, even an inch of space is too much for Boyden. And he levels the scores. He's been hot so far. So Lane comes in for the face off on the wing. As Merrill's back at the dot, having lost the last one to Pallotta. This time, it's Burn. it's Burn who's able to scoop it up for the Dutchman. Goes down from behind. A hold is called, so the Union Dutchman will get it back with Titus and he'll get it over to McCann. McCann guarded by Waldbaum. Waldbaum with some good pressure. McCann swims, gets off the pressure. Checked by Reed. And now Del Cristo. Davis with the ball down in the wing. Here comes Davis dodging against Del Cristo. Splits to his left, gets some space, finds nothing there. Back to his left again. Flips it back behind to Burns. Burns dives and scores! Backhanded shot from Burns, and he is loving it once more as he puts the Union Dutchman back on top. Yeah, Burns with the first quarter hat trick. I am really impressed by the way he's playing. He's playing fearlessly as he's taking some big hits while scoring. And that one, you know, maybe he saw Jack, what Jack Boyden did on the other end and said, I want to do something fancy today. What a beautiful shot. Tucked it into the corner. Yeah, he's not the biggest guy, only 165 pounds. But he is taking on the matchup of Tuff's best one-on-one -on -one defender, Kyle Edelman, and so far he's been dominating that one. Meanwhile, in for the face-off is Mason Cohn, also on the Tuff's hockey team. This is his first year playing Tuff's lacrosse, as he looks to win the face-off for the Jumbos. Yeah, he's a big physical specimen. Vern is able to get it out again. Tracked down by Cohn, takes a hack, saved by Garzone. It looks like the flag may fly. Nope, timeout. Uh, Union gets the timeout away, or it would appear. Interesting. I guess that shot wouldn't have counted yeah. anyways. So, all, all's, all's well that ends well, excuse me, for the Union Dutchman, as the shot is saved by Garzone, but a timeout called before to save the possession with one minute 
and eight seconds remaining in this first quarter yeah. as Union leads five to four. Yeah, that's a smart timeout by Coach Witherford. Uh, you know, shot clock is not going to be relevant here as it's only one second in front of the game clock. So look for Union to move the ball around a lot. They probably don't want the Jumbos to get the ball again this quarter. Um, except my guess is that they're going to do some sort of dodge from the midfield towards the middle uh, of the field and look towards those bottom corners like they have so far and maybe find Burns or Fry um, on these bottom posts who can dunk it down low. Yeah, patience will definitely be a key, as it has been for the Union offense all day. Definitely opting for settled possessions, really holding onto the ball, taking high-quality opportunities when they can. Yeah, they have. And it's not like they've been dominating the one-on-one -on -one matchups against the Jumbos. They've really just scored gritty goals, been patient, like you said. Um, and when they've needed to execute, they have. Garzon's made a few saves, but they've certainly beat him well, which is usually his strong spot. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they do here. So the Tufts defense will come out one more time to try to stifle the Dutchman. On the field for Union, Peter Kipp, Fry, McCann, Burns, Davis, and McGovern. So all the starters out there, first line midfield. Here's Davis against Timmons. And now Mirtha comes out to Kipp. Whistles go. Shot clock, a little bit of a shot clock mishap. So with 55 seconds remaining, Union really not having gotten anything going yet. Seems like they may wait until about 20 or 30 seconds left in the left on the clock to really get anything going. Yeah, that would be my guess. You know, you got to be very happy leading 5-4 so far uh, in this game. So no point in letting the Jumbos get another chance. Play this down to the end. Yeah, so a little bit of a lack of clarity as to whether the shot clock should be off or one second above the game clock. Um, but either way, Davis has the ball guarded by Timmons for now. Looks They'll like switch the matchup to Ayers, the freshman. Yeah. Very talented freshman, Michael Ayers. Yes, he's been playing very well so far. Couple ground balls. Looks like they'll start it with McGovern, who is Union's best midfielder on the offensive end. McGovern out of Wilton, Connecticut. Same high school as Joe Murtha, baby. Joe Murtha. Wilton Warriors, very well represented on this field today. Massachusetts as a whole as well. Yeah. Union with undoubtedly more Massachusetts players than Tufts has. And Probably over half the roster. And maybe that's got them fired up a little bit. Maybe we weren't recruited by the Jumbos. It's a, uh, it's a vengeance game for them, I guess. <laughs> yeah, either way, we've got McGovern back to Davis. Shot clock is to 54, so effectively off um, after all that deliberation. Um, either way, so about a 1.8 second difference between the shot clock and game clock as Davis will get us going against Ayers after a little bit of a delay. Back up to McGovern, guarded by Timmons. This might be a matchup that the, the Union Dutchman looked to exploit. Yeah, McGovern's a great dodger. Timmons, he's a good defensive midfielder, don't get me wrong. Um, but as a freshman, does not really have the experience. McGovern just killing time, 35 seconds remaining. Let's see how long he waits before he chooses to dodge. Yeah, Jumbo Coach is yelling at Timmons to get up on him and pressure him. Timmons not obliging for now, doesn't want to get burned. McGovern to the middle of the field, does get inside. Where's the slide coming from? He'll swing it over to Davis. Davis checked by Hall, gets to the middle of the field, can't get a shot away, does get a shot away and scores! High to high, Davis with a beautiful jump shot, and Union adds one more to their lead. They'll lead by two going into the second quarter unless the Jumbos can make something happen off the faceoff. Yeah, that was a great dodge by Davis. He saw the slide coming and said, I really don't care. Just ran by Murtha, who's coming on the slide, and the jump shot, taking it back to 2008. Yeah, so, so far, Union offense looking quite good. Especially generating a lot of looks out of this midfield. Yeah. As we go back to the face-off X one more time, potentially one more time, before the beginning of our second quarter. Ball is on the ground, nearly scooped up by Reed. It will be picked up by Union, but it looks like it looks like Matt Belouche might have stepped out of the box beforehand. So it does go to the Jumbos with Bradle. 
about half a second left. Bradel gets a shot away wide of Donahue's cage, and we will go to the second quarter with Union leading six to four. So, a good final possession for the Union Dutchman there. The Jumbo certainly on offense, able to generate some looks, but certainly left a lot to de a lot to desire there as well. Yeah, in, in terms of the Jumbo's offense, it's really not much volume at all. Really haven't gotten the ball too many times, and some uncharacteristic turnovers have shortened their possessions. Um, look for them, look for the Jumbo's offense to take a play, uh, page out of the Union playbook and slow it down a little bit. We all know the capacity of their one-on-one -on -one Dodgers, as Borden has showed already today, and Kelleher as well. So I think for Coach Tanolfo, the offensive game plan should be be smart, make good, shorter passes, and trust your one-on-one -on -one matchups, right? They've got some great athletes on offense who can light it up, and they have all season. No need to panic, but if you're the Dutchman, no need to take the foot off the gas. We all know how quickly um, the game can change when you have this Jumbo's offense op opposing you. Yeah, and what do you think the Jumbos can do on defense to try to lock it up a little better in this second quarter? They need to slide with more intensity. On that McCann goal, we or not McCann, that Davis goal we just saw, the slide came but was a little too weak. Uh, Jumbos really need to slide hard, get to the body, and force some turnovers. Yeah, we're definitely seeing a little bit of stick swing from the Jumbos defense so far. Yep. A little bit uncharacteristic. They've looked good in transition um, after turning it over in the ride or for, in the clear the first few times. Uh, but they'll definitely need to step it up unless the Jumbo's offense can really turn things around, yeah. which we certainly know they're capable of. Yeah, I don't think the clearing is going to be an issue anymore. Um, it, it's just really hard to sustain a ride like Union has in this first quarter. The Jumbo's are a great ride as well, um, but look for the Jumbo's to cool it down a little bit. Yeah, so Clint Gordo and Sam Sturm in front of us. Parker Merrill back at the faceoff dot with Pilata. Merrill wins it cleanly to himself. He's taking it right down the center of the field. Gets a shot away over the top, backed up by Bradle. So that's a good start for the Jumbos. Yep. They'll get a possession to start this second quarter. Yeah, that's what we call a possession shot, missing the net, knowing that your boy is back there to back it up. So here's Boyden as Kelleher comes onto the field, guarded by Gordeaux. He draws the pull, splits the inside of the field to his right hand, not his favorite hand. Oh, he's ambidextrous. Over to Merrill, still on the field, and Bradle has the defense hung up. So, we know how deadly a feeder he is. Let's see what he can find here. And he's gonna take as much time as he wants until he finds an open look. Maybe even look for some acrobatics here. He'll take it inside, shot just over the bar, shooting right off the hip of the defender, of, off the hip of Puglisi. Really tough for Donahue to see that shot. Boyden swings it. Gets inside a shot and gets away. Donahue makes the save, flips it back to Tagliaferri. It's put on the ground by the Union defense, so a good cause turnover, and they will get it to Donahue to try to start the clear. Yeah, it looked like Alf hit the post there. A little bit unlucky. Alf has been very effective dodging from these low angles. Titus runs into some trouble, managed to evade Trevor Hall, and flips it over his shoulder. Waldbaum not able to scoop it up. Wow. McCann able to get there, and he'll give it to Fry, but Fry can't handle the pass. Murtha with the one-handed ground ball, and he'll look to clear it. So a lot of just hectic play in the middle of the field for now. I think that could define the rides and clears for this game so far. Here's Waldbaum thinking about the shot again. He's found himself on the offensive end quite a few times today. And Bradle showing trust in him right there. Bradle rolling back against Puglisi. He'll go to his right hand, swing it up to Boyden. Boyden has a short stick, and that's McGovern too. Yeah, McGovern's so an offensive not using midfielder. It. Yeah, he makes a uncharacter, well not uncharacteristic, but a mistake that an offensive player would. Pass inside, just wide on the shot. Looks like there will be a penalty against Union, so Tufts will get the man up opportunity first of the game for them. I think they're getting McGovern on the cross, Jack. Yeah, and they, as you said, it a mistake characteristic of an offensive midfielder. Not only did he get stuck on, on defense, he also gave away the penalty. So our coach won't be happy with that, but it will give a man up opportunity to the Jumbos. Yeah, wow. this is big right here, down two. Uh, Jumbos haven't had a man up all game, and they really need a goal here. Who should we watch out for on the man up, Kyle? Look for Max Eddinghausen. He's a freshman, number 13. He is small, but can shoot it hard. And number two, Duke Alfin as well. Kelleher feeds it inside, goes to no one, right to Donahue. And Jumbos, not what they were looking for in their first man up possession of the game. 
No, it's not, but look for them to ride hard here with the extra man. Yeah, Bradle can't quite dislodge it from Donahue. Donahue's still carrying up. He draws a pole now. Trevor Hall can't take it away either, but he's still on him. Oh. Behind the back from Donahue. Well played from the gold goalie for Union College. And yeah. they'll get it to fry the attackman. The bench is eating that up. Great goalie play from Donahue. Not often you see a goalie hit a BTB on the other side of the field. So, Union does kill off the penalty, and Peter Kipp comes in for them. Here's Zach Davis, the senior. Over to Davis, guarded by Sturm, down the alley. Little bit of an ill-advised pass, and Garzon picks it off before slightly dropping the ball. Garzon gets it back as they try to set up the clear. Garzon back over to Edelman. 10 seconds remaining clear for the Jumbos. This has been a problem for them before, but it looks like Edelman just pulls out his do-it-yourself kit and clears it over the line. <laughs> Trevor Hall with the shot, saved by Donahue. A good save low from the Union goalie, and he'll look to get transition going. Here comes Davis, can't quite handle the pass from Davis, and he'll swing it back to Brian Davis. Uh, we got Brian and Zach Davis out there, yeah. no relation. Yeah, on that shot by Hall, you know, usually as a defender with the long stick, you're looking to get a lot of up and down motion. It, Hall really didn't get that, kind of kept it uh, on Donahue's hip level, and he made a really easy save there. Here's McGovern guarded by his good friend Murtha. Murtha goes over the head on him. McGovern gets a weak shot away, however, and saved by Garzon. So a bit of an ill-advised check for Murtha, but either way, it results in a Jumbo's possession, which nope. is immediately turned over. Man, the Jumbos just have not looked like themselves on the clear or on the offensive well, end so far this game. You know, it looks like Union's doing a drop ride, which is what you see Tufts do a lot, where you really crowd the midfield with bodies, let the defensive team clearing pass the ball around towards their own net, but as they get closer, the pressure intensifies, and it seems like the Jumbos just really aren't ready for that yet. Yeah, so Zach Davis leaves it, leaves it for Peter Kipp, back to Davis. And here's Kipp guarded by Murtha. Gets to his right hand. Bodies up against Murtha. Good defense by Murtha. Murtha with a beautiful check from behind, takes it away. And here, look for Joe Murtha to run in transition. Oh, McGovern's hawking him down though. Murtha over to Boyden. Boyden thinks about the shot, feeds it inside. Shot goes wide. Massive contact, multiple flags fly. Oh! Bit of shoving going. Puglisi puts, Puglisi puts Del Cristo on the ground twice. Looks like a, definitely a penalty will be going against, Del, uh, against Puglisi, excuse me as he's forced off the field by his captain. Yeah, well we said it was going to be a tough and physical game, and it's certainly living up to the hype. Both these teams have been playing so well this year. A lot of pressure for both teams to win this game. A little more chit chat in the box between Puglisi and Mirth Mirtha. We'll see exactly what the call is right here. It'll be an unnecessary roughness call for the contact against Del Cristo and the captain Puglisi will sit for one minute. Yeah, Jumbo's got another possession here with the extra man. Look for them to get a better look. Yeah, they'll definitely need to settle in here. Here's Alf up top. Down low, shot from Swank. Saved by Donahue, he's been eating those up so far. Very impressed with Donahue so far. Swank is a hard shooter, that's a great save. But a bad pass by Donahue. Cam Kelleher fighting for the ground ball. Beautiful play by the Union Dutchman. But it looks like, and since it was in the, Excuse me. It's gonna be offside. Yeah, when Edelman, very smart, pushed uh, Burns, Burns, it looks like, over the midline, meaning that Union only had two players on their offensive end. That will be called every single time, especially with Coach Dinolfo in the ref's ear. Yeah, so the Jumbos get possession back, which is big for them. Eddinghausen onto the field again, and here's Alf. Alf been operating up top so far. Let's see if they opt to change anything up on the man up, or if they stick with their plans. Back to Alf, he'll get a step down. Takes the oh. shot, buries it. <laughs> high to high, sidearm, just too much heat for Dan Donahue to handle, and Alf buries it. Yep, Alf makes it five to six. We got oh, a little over nine minutes left. That is what we call liquid smoke. If you give a guy like Duke Alf seconds to, to um, get a crow hop and then power into his shot, that's just really, really putting a lot of strain on your goalie there. Yeah, asking a little too much of Dan Donahue there, even though he's been playing phenomenally. And Parker Merrill and Byrne will be back at the faceoff X. Merrill wins the clamp, scoops it out to himself, and a good ground ball as well. So Merrill been playing well so far. He slips there, but he's able to get back to his feet 
That set up a possession for the Jumbos. Going hard down the center of the field. Merrill with a shot. Another one of your possession shots there. Yeah. And Bradle will back it up. I really hope he wasn't aiming for the goal there because that would not have hit a barn. Hit the broad side of a barn. Bradle goes down hard. No flag flies despite some contact to the head. Either way, Salton gets a shot away. Saved by uh, Donahue. Not the best shot there. No, kind of a rush possession there. And now they give Union some transition. Running in transition is Union. Back over the top. Passes do not connect. And it is finally scooped up by Green. Green will wisely decide to slow it down for the Jumbos. Yeah, on that last Jumbos possession, I really, I think the shot was a little premature. You know, as we've said, there have been a lot of turnovers early on. Um, and I'm sure Coach Tanolfo wants his players to settle a little, a little more uh, than usual, especially today when it's very cold, stick skills aren't as good. Uh, even though they love to push transition, maybe an unwise shot there from Salton. who got caught on defense now. So here's Donahue against Sturm. He'll swing it to Fry. Fry guarded by Trevor Hall. Spins back, good move. Fry with the shot. Got a lot on that one, but yeah. it went wide. Yeah, Fry's been quiet, but he is certainly an offensive threat for Union. He's got 15 goals in the season. Here's uh, McCann guarded by Edelman. Bit of a height advantage here for McCann. He gets inside, but has to pass it off. Burns against Joey Waldbaum. Back out to Donahue. Donahue still guarded by Sturm. Can't find anything there in that matchup. Trevor Hall on Fry now. And back over to Green. Green guarded by Salton. He gets to his left hand. Slide comes from Michael Ayers. Michael Ayers with a good lift check. Tried to throw it behind the back, did Green. Ayers with a great check that helped cause that turnover. And now he's, here he is running in transition. Michael Ayers, the freshman. He'll swing it down to Bradle. Bradle looking to go early. Gets to the middle of the field, shot underhand. Backed up well by Swank, so the Jumbos will keep possession here. Yeah, please just hold on to the ball for a little bit. Oh. Over to Ayers, Ayers saved by Donahue, but it's battered right back in. A great play by Sam Sturm. Just playing volleyball out there, swatting oh, no. in the rebound. It looks and like they're- It looks like it will be called off oh, after all wow. that. Uh, I, I believe they called a push after the Ayers shot. Ah. Huh. A tough just, call for the Jumbos. Yeah, a tough break. Since Sturm had just batted it in. Um, either way, it looks like a whistle went before the goal, so the goal will come off the board, but the Jumbos will get the ball back. A little deliberation from the referees here. Jumbos looking to get into their offensive set here. So with 7.24 remaining in the second quarter, Cam Keller will have the ball up top. Still 5-6. to six. Back up top to Alf. Alf swings back to his right hand. Over to Kelleher. Kelleher looking to sweep across. Splits to his right. Back behind to Bradle, and Bradle has the defense hung up once more. Feeds in front. Kelleher saved by Donahue. Point blank save from Donahue. Good pass from Bradle. That's what we expect to see when Bradle has the defense hung up. Yeah, Donahue's playing lights out today. Cole Salton now dodging. Over to Bradle. Bradle has a chance. Gets the shot away, underhanded, left-handed. Over. The shot clock did reset to 60 on that shot from Kelleher, so the Jumbos have plenty of time to operate here as Salton is guarded by Titus. Titus guarding Salton. Salton over to Tagliaferri, or excuse me, Alf. Alf spins back to his right, gets a shot away, saved by Donahue again. That'll reset the shot clock if the Jumbos can back it up. But they do not, they do. So a tough call against yeah. Union there because it looked like Puglisi was standing right where it went out. Either way, Bradle gets it back. Here comes Bradle now, operating from behind. Forces it over to Swank. Swank steps to his left and unleashes a worm burner. Yeah. <laughs> Alf is there on the backup. Another shot clock reset, so a long test for the Union defense right here. Here's Alf dodging to his left. Spins back to his right. Good defense so far. Alf back to the left. Shoots over, yeah. backed up by Bradle. Alf is playing very aggressive today. He's already got one. He's actually scored in every game this season. Um, and he's really no stranger. He used to play attack. So when he's dodging down on those wings, just know that he used to do it a lot. Bradle gets a shot away now. Backed up by Alf again. So as I said before, a long test for this Union defense. Yep. A lot of patience from Tufts here, getting a lot of shots off on this possession. High quality looks. Haven't been able to bury any of them yet. 
Yeah, Donahue's got nine saves already. Can't stay that Alf forever. Alf gets inside, shoots wide. Backed up by Bradle, so 5.50 remaining in the quarter, 23 on the shot clock. They'll swing it back to Salton against Titus. Pick coming from Boyden. He chooses not to use it. Salton gets inside, cross-handed shot, beaten away by Donahue, and Titus picks up the ground ball. No penalty. Titus gets lit up like a Christmas tree by Kelleher. <laughs> um, but a push is yeah. called. So Kelleher's hit all for nothing. I tell the you Union what. Dutchman keep the ball. And Joe, I know you'll agree with me. Titus is playing super tough in the defensive midfield. He's doing a great job clearing. Really seems to be sort of the lifeblood of this Union team. He is. And you know I love my D middies. Yes. So he's putting in a lot of work. He leads the team in ground balls. Um, and you just got Union another possession right there. Here's McGovern. McGovern against Eimer. Tiger Eimer stays with him. He swings it over. Down to Fry and back to Davis. And here's Peter Kipp against Joe Murtha, a matchup we've seen a lot of today. Kipp to his left hand, fakes, passes over Davis. The rotation comes from the Tufts defense and a bad pass from Davis right over the head of Burns and Tufts gets it back. I think that's a good example of when Tufts slides aggressively and rotates fast that they can force turnovers. It's what they didn't do in the first quarter and now they've got the ball. Here's Edelman on the offensive end after a good pass by Waldbaum. He'll give it to Kelleher. Kelleher over to Taglia Ferry. Back to Kelleher, slips at first. We've seen that a couple times tonight so far. Kelleher back to his left hand, good move. Knocked down by Puglisi. Great defense Radle by Puglisi. not able to come up with the ground ball and Puglisi creates the turnover. Yeah, Union's really making everything difficult here for the Jumbos. So a timeout by the jump. So hypnotic, magical. Picking up the ground ball. Yeah, so usually on a clearing or a riding opportunity when uh, Coach Donolfo calls a timeout, maybe expect a 10-man ride or something funky to force a quick turnover and make some transition. The, you know, the game's been stalled at 5-6 for a while now. Um, and I know that if the Jumbos are looking to initiate offense, they want to do it through transition. Yeah, so with 439 remaining in this second quarter, the Jumbos will have a chance to set up an organized ride. And as you said, we'll see what they throw out there. Definitely, if they can get the ball back fast, they'll look to get shots on cage, score quickly. Yep. And truthfully, the game has gone more or less how Union will have wanted it to oh, yeah. so far. It's not really been an open game. A lot of hectic play in the midfield, but not that many opportunities for Tufts to run in transition. And we've seen that when they do run in transition, players like Joey Waldbaum are making things happen for them. Yeah. They're scoring goals when they can get out in transition. Just so far, Union hasn't really allowed them to. No, and I think it's been a few elements that's kind of kept Union's defense playing strong. Bradle hasn't shot the ball well at all today. Um, and they are doing a great job at um, you know, getting in these passing lanes, getting on hands when the jumbo um, offensive players are making passes and it truly has manifested itself holding a team like this to five goals at this point is like holding a normal team to I don't know maybe one like, or two yeah three goals at this point <laughs> either way they'll have to figure out some ride here and it is a 10 man we've got Matt Lane out on the field for the jumbos he's gonna try to check Davis good movement by Sturham it will get over to Titus in the end that's the man who stick you wanted it. He gets it to Fry. Fry gets a shot away and scores. So Titus receives the ball from Davis, able to find an open Fry because of the 10-man ride, and he beats Garzone. Yeah. So seven to five Union. Yeah, Coach Anolfo gambled there with the 10-man ride, and it looked pretty good. Titus made a great play to catch that ball, and then he moved it, and then that's history. Hayden Fry, we know he's a good finisher, and without Garzone getting a chance to set up, that's almost automatic. Yeah, so. Big Union face off here. Union expands the lead to two. Tufts would love a possession right here as Parker Merrill, who's been pretty dominant so far against both Byrne and Pilato. Pilato. We've got Cam Del Cristo out there on the wing for the Jumbos. One and forward by Parker Merrill, and he'll scoop up the ground ball. I bet he's shooting. Merrill shoots again, <laughs> this time caught by Bradle. So call it a bounce pass. Um, and Bradle will start behind the cage against Puglisi. He's gotten a few shots away. They've been... They've been from odd angles, but we know Bradle can put it away from pretty much anywhere. So 
Here he is operating from, from top this time. Spins beautifully on Puglisi. Wide open, saved by Donahue. Huge save from the Union goal, goaltender. Yeah. I mean, not often do you make a save on the best, arguably the best offensive player in the nation when he's got his hands free from 10. What a play by Donahue. He's Puglisi with a pinpoint pass, and now Fry just starts to slow it down after the pass from Burns. So a good pass from Puglisi in the clear. And they are able to break the Tufts ride once more. Here's Peter Kipp up top, guarded by Ayers. Over to Murtha on McGovern. We see that matchup once more. The high school friends and teammates. Yep. I wonder if Murtha will do an over the head check again. Probably not. Here's Del Cristo guarding Davis. McGovern attacks against Murtha. To his right hand. Nothing there. Good defense by Murtha so far. Still keeps him down the alley. Back out to Fry, guarded by Ayers. Gets a step behind to McCann. Over to Davis. Davis to his right hand. Looking to get a shot away. Does not. 20 remaining on the shot clock as McCann tries to dodge against Edelman. Nothing so far in this possession for the Union Dutchman. Here's McGovern against Murtha once more. McGovern slips down. Murtha over the head. Shot by McGovern. Beats his former teammate and beats Connor Garzone. And the lead is now but three. Eight to five Union with 2.43 remaining in the second quarter. Yeah, McGovern is really, really uh, crafty when it comes to his stick protection. Kind of gave Murtha a little angle to check it, but tucks it immediately when he sees Murtha's check coming in and just buries it down the lane. He's been getting to his left hand, uh, to those left-handed sweep dodges with ease, and that's really something that the jumbo defense needs to adjust to. The slides are just not there. Yeah, definitely not fast enough. And you know those two know each other's tendencies inside and out. Back to the face-off X. Looks like it's Mason Cohn in there for the Jumbos. It does come out in the end for Union, however, and Titus can't quite handle the pass at first. He'll drop it. Titus diving on the ground for the ball, but it is Waldbaum who comes up with it, and he'll get it to Sturm. Sturm looking to go in transition. Clint Gordeau behind him. He is aware and gets it down to Boyden. Or excuse me, Swank. Over to Kelleher. Kelleher with a step down. Saved by Donahue. Picked up by Sturm. Saved by Donahue again. And it looks like a push in the back. We'll give the ball back to Jumbos with a, a fully reset shot clock. Or excuse me, just a 60. What a sequence there from Donahue. Just made two doorstep saves. He is playing insane. Yeah, and Taglia Ferry comes onto the field to try to stay, change things for the Jumbos. So far, it's been Dan Donahue's goalie play that's been the difference in this game. Certainly. Here's, ta here's Taglia Ferry to a quick split, quick split dodge. It's down the alley, draws a slide. Back to Bradle, guarded by Puglisi, as usual. Bradle all the way up to Swank. Swank, Swank dodges inside against Thompson. Kelleher now beats Titus. He'll keep it in his right hand. Check from behind by Titus, and Titus takes it away. That's the ground ball. So a lot of daylight there for Kelleher, but he just didn't let the shot go in time. Bradle oh. nearly picks off the pass. That's a risky, risky pass across your own net like that. It is, and Puglisi in a little bit of trouble, but manages to get it away. Here's Jack Donahue now, pressured hard by Eimer. Really looking for the takeaway was Taggart Eimer there. And they will get it to Zach Davis. Timeout Union with 108 left in this second quarter and the half. 57 on the shot clock, so about a 10 second difference. So they will have to make something happen here. Yeah, and last time they had this sort of situation, they drew up a good play and scored, um, so. They are probably going back to the drawing board again, looking to hold the ball for a while like they did. Maybe wait till about, I don't know, 20 seconds, 25 seconds left in the shot clock to dodge. And if it is my guess, I'm guessing that they're gonna come from that top left spot and try to attack the middle of the field, which has been uncharacteristically open for the Jumbos on defense. Yeah, we've seen the short stick midfielders for the Jumbos more or less out on islands. They've done a good job one-on-one, -on -one, but obviously it's too much to ask any short stick to just stay on their own the entire game. And the majority of Union's goals have come from those sweep dodges. Either McGovern coming across to, the, to his left or Davis coming across to his right, yeah. which is what we saw, we saw in the first quarter. Kip had one too, where he tucked it in the bottom corner. So they really are sport for choice when it comes from dodging from up top, this Union Dutchman team. Yeah, and we've seen Tufts get stuff going dodging from up top too but their midfielders just haven't been able to bury it against red hot Dan Donahue. Yeah, Donahue with 12 saves already. He's faced 31 shots, which is 
usual for the Jumbos to get that type of high volume, but Donahue just stepped up and kept stepping up. Really a brick wall in net today. Yeah, the Liberty League play Defensive Player of the Week for the fourth time this season, as I said before, and he is playing out of his mind right now. Yeah, and when it comes to lacrosse, goalie play is arguably the most important thing in the game. Um, some people say good face-off play, but when you have a red-hot goalie like Donahue, you can beat anyone in the nation. Here's McGovern, checked hard by Eimer. Doesn't seem to want any more of that matchup. Neither would I. Yeah, really laying some lumber there was Taggart Eimer. Meanwhile, here's Zach Davis against Murtha. Murtha with good one-on-one -on -one defense. Back over, here's Green. Green against Durham. Green able to get to his right hand, nothing there though. Heimer against McGovern. This time he gets to his left. He'll get a shot away. Shot and saved by Garzone this time. That's the difference right there. Yep. Garzone makes the save. And with 30 seconds left, the Jumbos will get a final possession. Here's Eimer on the offensive end this time. This time Eimer with the ball against McGovern. Eimer's got a cannon. He is not afraid to shoot and take it to the net. This time he'll give it up to Bradel. 18 seconds left. Jumbos bench calling it out loud and strong for their players to hear. Here's Kelleher attacking against an offensive midi in Davis. Kelleher spinning back. Five seconds remaining. Kelleher's aware. He gets a shot away. Looks like it was saved by Donahue. With 1.8 remaining, Bradel has the backup. So it looks he may try to force something in front of the crease here. He does. It's knocked down by Puglisi and fired away. So we go to halftime with the score 8 to 5 Union. Yeah, Dutchman with a great half. Jumbo's definitely caught off guard, but if they want to come back in this game, it's going to be eliminating turnovers and getting tough on defense, sliding to the body in the middle. McGovern's had his way up top so far. Yeah, you said it, eliminating turnovers. They did a better job of it in the second quarter, but still, too many careless turnovers, both in the clear and on the offensive end. And then obviously, combine that with going against the red-hot goalie and Dan Donahue, and you're not going to have that much on the board. Yeah, and you know, the Jumbo offense should not be discouraged. They are getting really good looks. Donahue's just up to the task. But as we all know, that can't last forever. So I think if you're on the Jumbo's offensive game plan, keep it the same. Yeah, and we know how this Jumbo's offense can light it up. So if they do manage to get it rolling, then a three-goal three lead certainly looks like nothing. Oh, yeah.
Let me show you something. All right, welcome back here to Bellow Field, where it feels well below freezing. Um, as we look towards our second half of our men's lacrosse matchup today between the Union Dutchman and your own Tufts Jumbos. Right now, Union leading eight to five as we get set to start the second half. Kyle, what can we look for in the second half in terms of the Tufts offense really getting the ball rolling? Yeah, I think for them to get the ball rolling, it starts with just getting high quality shots. Donahue has been an absolute brick wall in net for the Dutchman. Um, and it's just gonna just gonna be a you know a test of the patience on offense that the Jumbos need to display and also just taking better shots. I, I think that Bradle hasn't taken great shots yet today. Um, they just need to get better looks. Either way, we're underway now, and Pilato breaking away, shoots right over the bar. Burns backs it up for, for the Union Dutchman. So a fast start to the second half right here from Pilato. And Fry will set up an offense for the Dutchman. He swings it over to Davis, guarded by Murtha. Here's Peter Kipp, guarded by Sturham. Back to Davis. Murtha on him. They switch over to Sturham, and now Kipp against Murtha. Kipp has it in his left hand, going down the alley hard, gets inside, passes to Burns. Off the post, it looks like, or maybe saved. Either way, Garzon comes up with it in the end, and Edelman will get it to start the clear. Back to Garzon. Garzon will bring it up as Trevor Hall comes off the field for Cam Kelleher. Ball goes well over, so a good pass to Boyden. There, excuse me, here's Boyden to Sturham. And back to Sturham. Sturham down the alley, back to Boyden up top and the Jumbos have the first possession, their first possession of the second half. Swank oh. immediately drops it, however. Kelleher with a great ground ball in traffic, but it's checked away by Gordo. So Union takes it away after a great play by Kelleher to scoop up that ground ball. And Union, as they started the first half, will start with two possessions in a row. Inside goes Burns, flying through the air. Some contact with Garzon in the crease. The crease. Yeah. And they will get the crease call. I think that's the right call there by the referees. I agree. I, I, Burns is fearless, though. I mean, he really came in like a kamikaze. Almost scored that one. Boyden swings it down to Swank. Swank thinks about the shot. Skips it all the way back up. Can't quite be handled there. Rado just couldn't haul it in. Taglia Ferry gets an open look. Immediately bumped off, though. Yeah, I, you know, I think the Jumbo should really slow it down. It looks like they're rushing things a little bit. Too many turnovers. Speaking of which, there's Taglia Ferry with a speculative shot. Great job by Lewis Timmons to run that one out. He started well behind there, but was able to make up some ground. Yeah, you know, if I'm... If I'm the Jumbos right now, I'm working around the horn at least one time. Let everyone get a touch before we take the first dodge. Here's Kelleher with the dodge from the wing. Swings it to Bredo. Bredo with a pass up top. Here's Taglia Ferry. Taglia Ferry over to Alf. Alf here dodging against the Nave. There Down you go. to Bredo. And here's Bredo with a hung up opportunity again. He'll look for a pass. Looks at Boyden. Ignores him for now. 28 on the shot clock for the Jumbos. Back up to Keller. Keller to his left, shot, shoots over the bar. No, Backed no. up by Bradle, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Kyle, what do you think the Jumbos can do here to kind of avoid the stagnancy of their offense? I think you gotta let Mac Bradle dodge it to the net. He's the best player on offense, the most dynamic player in the country. Sometimes you gotta rely on your leaders. Boyden with a great pass inside. And the backup will go to Donahue. So Donahue, despite the freezing weather, managing to stay hot, does a great job diving out of his cage to get the backup there. A good pass, however, by Boyden, and that's a high-quality look for Kelleher right there. Yeah, you know, Kelleher usually buries that, too. I think, you know, sometimes when shooters face a hot goalie, they look to hit the corners too perfectly. 
um, which we'll see a lot of shots go wide. A pass in front and a goal from McCann for the Union Dutchman. So they waste no time getting on the board in this second half as Fry got the ball quickly and fed it in front to McCann. Lead is up to nine to five now with 12 minutes remaining in this third quarter. Yeah, something we're seeing for Union on their clearing is they're really throwing the ball deep with longer passes, which are risky passes, but if you can complete them, you can catch the defense out of shape, which is what they did there. And if you have people that can finish like McCann did, it can be a very successful strategy. Parker Merrill held down a little bit by Byrne there, but still manages to come up with the ground ball. So a great play by Parker Merrill. Yeah, Merrill's done really well in the absence of Hesse today. Yeah, and he's certainly given the Jumbos a lot more possessions. Here's Boyden working in against a double team. Nearly turns it over. Good work from Swank to keep the possession for the Jumbos. Meanwhile, Merrill has his opposite man stuck on the field. Now Merrill has an opportunity as the Dutchman sub. <laughs> But I think Swank, Swank ignores him for now. Yeah, Swank said, nah, get off the field, buddy. <laughs> and here comes Kevin Christmas onto the field, as well as Garrett Kurtz. Kurtz is a dynamic dodger. He can really beat a guy off the front. He gets some space. Good pass up top to Christmas. Ops not for the shot yet. Oh, takes it inside, and it's just checked away by Thompson. A beautiful goal-saving check there from Thompson because Christmas was coming right down the alley. That was like a freight train going through a tunnel. Yeah, what I wouldn't want to get in the way of that one. Yeah. Here he is again. He gets inside, now he'll shoot, stuffed by Donahue, however, right to the stick of Donahue, and another save for the Union Dutchman goalie. I don't know what snack Donahue had on the bus today, but whatever it is, he should eat it every single time. Yeah, and whatever <laughs> it is, I want some too. Yeah, he is um, lights out, man. Lights either out. way, they do manage to get the clear. Here's Zach DiMuccio, throws it over the head of Burns, so a bad turnover from DiMuccio uh, for Union. Edelman does get it back. And the sloppiness has continued into this second half. Both teams having a little trouble with their stick skills, probably because of the cold. Yeah, and we see it once more there uh. again, off the stick of Matt Lane. He can't quite take it from McGovern. Here comes McGovern down the field. Yeah, McGovern's been playing a lot of offense and defense today. Uh, Union really running their midfielders up and down the field. McCann over to Fry as Titus comes to the box. Here's Brian Davis. Titus comes off and Peter Kipp will trot over the midfield line. So here's Kipp, this time guarded by Reed. He gets to his right hand, his favorite right hand. Gets a shot away, good shot there. Goes just wide, Burns backs it up. Yeah, Kipp loves going towards the middle and is not afraid to let it fly. Good defense by Reed though. You know, shots that come from around 15, 16 yards really don't have a shot. Yeah, especially when Connor Garzone's in net, he's been playing well. There's a shot, oh. and another goal for Burns. That's the second time we've seen that backhanded shovel shot, and he is just eating up the Tufts defense right now as the Union Dutchmen expand their lead to five goals. That's either Burns' fourth or fifth goal today. He is really showing out. You know, coming into this game, we thought Fry and McGovern were going to be their two biggest offensive threats, but Burns has been fearless dodging to the net, and with his craftiness and finishing, he's proven a big test for this defense. Yeah, so with 10 minutes remaining, Tufts is back at the faceoff dot. It's Merrill winning another one, and Ayers picks up the ground ball. Freshman to freshman, Ayers is playing great on these faceoffs. Getting hacked by Titus. Spins beautifully away from Titus there. So Ayers will carry into the offensive zone. Ayers gets a shot away over the bar. Backed up by Swank. A great possession there for the freshman. Maybe not the result he would have wanted with the shot. But either way, can't be too unhappy with that one. But that is, you know, what long poles should be doing when they're shooting. Go really high to low, um, especially on the bouncer there. I do like that play. It's yeah. tough for the goalie to see those. Here's Duke Alf. Yeah, coming from almost 10 feet in the air, definitely. Duke Alf dodging. Turned away by Gordo. And over to Taglia Ferry. Kyle Edelman subs back in. Taglia Ferry down the right-handed alley. Can't find a shot. Swings it back to Keller. Whoa. Beautiful move by Keller. Oh, oh my goodness, he just left Titus in the dust and tucked it right over the shoulder of Dan Donahue. That it was takes a moment of brilliance like that to beat a goalie like Donahue. That was an absolute rocket. Donahue, for as hot as he's been, will never be hotter than the cannon that is on Cam Kelleher's right-hand side. He's a lefty, but you know, as we've seen most of this game, he really can dodge to either side. And there he gets a step and just finishes it. And if Tufts wants to come back in this game, they are going to have to rely on their best players like Camden Kelleher. Yeah, and how about that juke? The Union D-Middies have no idea what happened to them there. No. 
Parker Merrill with another great ground ball. He's just been so tough today, hasn't he, He Kyle? really has, and he's kept the Jumbos in this game. Granted, they haven't made the most of their possessions. Uh, however, Merrill, this is a big confidence game for him as well, getting the starting nod for the first time in his career. Here's Boyden down the alley, swings it back. Back to Boyden. And he'll give it back up to Bradle. Bradle to Kelleher. Let's see if Kelleher can do the same. Work some magic up here from the top. I don't know why they keep a short stick on him. Uh, that really doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so Kelleher against the short stick matchup. He'll take it to X and invert. Kelleher was an attackman in high school, so he's comfortable there. He'll come up to his left, get a shot away. Nearly tucked it into that far post. It goes just wide, backed up by Boyd. And 37 on the shot clock. Eight minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Boyden gets it started again, swings to Tagliaferri. He draws the pole. Alf on a short stick matchup. Big height advantage here as well against DiMuccio. Alf is licking his chops. He takes it right inside, now. scores! Right over the left shoulder of Donahue this time. The Jumbos with two in a row there. That'll give the offense some confidence. Yep, Duke Alf, senior leader. Uh, he's very used to going down that, that alley. Usually he rolls back to get up on his, uh, a better angle for his left-handed shot, but that time he offs for the cross-handed shot, which he tucks right over the shoulder of Donahue. Uh, if you put a guy who's, you know, maybe five foot six on an attacker who is six foot two, it's just not gonna work. Pilato wins the faceoff for Union, a much needed win there. He swings it to Fry. Fry, good move. Shot, score for Fry. Wow. An immediate answer from the Union Dutchman there. What happened on the faceoff there, Kyle? You know, you know, face-offs are very 50-50 um, sometimes, and looks like Pilato just got a really good jump in the whistle. And as we've seen, and as he's shown throughout the whole season, he's super comfortable with the ball. And I'm guessing he has some sort of offensive experience, maybe in high school. But that was a very nice pass. And, well, the finish. What a great shot. Fry catches it on his right, spins to his left, and before Garzon could even see the ball in his left hand, the ball is in the back of the net. Meanwhile, Parker Merrill turns it around this time, able to beat Pilato. That's a mentally tough faceoff right there. Yeah, it definitely is. And here's Merrill down the field. Swings it over to Boyden. Boyden down to Bradle. Bradle shot between the legs of Donahue, and he makes another save. Maybe and a little bit of immediately. frustration shot there. They're looking to run in transition over to Fry. Fry can't quite. Beautiful what play by play Edelman, with. knocking down the pass because Burns was wide open on the doorstep. But Burns does great hustle and ground ball by Burns. Speculative swim move, and it is wow. finally knocked out of bounds. Oh, but that's it a, will go to the Union. That's a bad call. It was in Burns' stick, and it got knocked out. Did not go off a Tusk player. I really disagree with that. Right in front of the away crowd, so they certainly won't disagree. Either way, here's McCann, and Union gets the ball back after a good hustle play by Burns. Yeah, Tosh should play aggressive here. It looks like the Union's second midfielder's in. Uh, I, I really trust these tough matchups against them, especially one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, down Oof. the alley, here comes just a lot of speed there from Jack Donahue. Gets the shot away, but it goes wide, backed up by Burns. You know, I think if you're, you know, the tough defense, you've gotta be a little bewildered at the fact that they are getting so much space off these dodges. It could be because the slides are a little bit slower, or maybe the feet are a little bit cold. However, Union is really getting space. Zach Davis looking to do exactly that here against Sturham. He finds some, but not enough. Fry behind the back, bad pass, but it is tracked down by McCann. It was bad enough that they could salvage it. McCann going up to his right hand, shoots it. Certainly a bit of a speculative effort there. Goes wide, well wide, but backed up by Burns again. So with 28 on the shot clock, Union will look to make something happen here. Good defense by Tufts so far in this possession. They'll get it back up to Davis up top. This has been their favorite matchup so far. Davis against Sturm. Sturm stays with him. Switched on to by Edelman. And now Fry against Sturm. This is a matchup that Union will want to exploit. Sturm's got good footwork, but Fry's a physical dodger. He gets to his left hand. Checked from behind by Sturm. So good defense by Sturm as Fry's shot sails over. Yeah. Five on the shot clock, and it looks like Union will just punt this possession as they sub on their defensive personnel. Maybe not. McCann tries to dodge, spins inside, and scores! So forget any talk about punting. McCann says, I'll take it myself. Spins back to the inside and tucks it away with his right hand. Beautiful goal by McCann. Yeah. And it's 12-7 to for the Union Dutchman. Yeah, you know, and we've said it all game, right? The middle of the field, there hasn't been enough aggression from this tough defense. Right there, McCann comes in, spins, doesn't get hit hard enough, 
And, you know, if you're not going to hit guys in the middle of the field, they're going to score on you. This Union team is not scared of the Jumbos, and they've shown it here. McCann with a really fearless dodge, even with very little left on the shot clock. Yeah, good point there, Kyle. Here's Merrill once again on the faceoff, this time beating Byrne. He's been absolutely eating up the Dutchman on the faceoff. He really has. Can't ask any more from the freshman. Here's Ayers. He'll spin against Titus. Passes inside to Boyden. That's Del Cristo. Er, <laughs> What's he doing? Del Cristo <laughs> in the attacking zone. Here's Boyden now. Back over to Kelleher. Maybe Kelleher can make something happen here. If anyone could take over, it could be Cam Kelleher. He's got great footwork and a great shot. Speaking of taking over, Mac Bradle shovels it backhand against the post. That's a tough break for Bradle, who has just not been able to find the back of the net today so far. Yeah, very unfortunate there. Bradle is very, very creative when he dodges, especially there. It's just launched into the night sky by Donahue. McCann nearly comes up with it, but a good play by Alf to come up with it. Alf over to Bradle, wide open look, puts it wide. And Donahue has the backup. So once again, Bradle just unable to find the target. I mean, this is one of the best performances by a goalie in, I've ever seen in recent memory. Uh, Donahue is just standing on his head and he's getting into the psyche of these Tufts attackmen and their shooters. Bradle there usually doesn't put it wide. I wonder if he was thinking he had to be a little too perfect there to beat the red hot Donahue. Here goes McGovern, able to bump off Del Cristo, nearly goes out of bounds. Burns gets it down though, guarded by Edelman. Back to Davis and Peter Kipp comes onto the field. He's guarded by Alf. This is a favorable matchup, but it doesn't look like Kipp recognizes it yet. Well, now, now he, he does, does, and he'll get it back. If I'm Alf, I'm not letting Kip get to the middle. Force him down the alley. He does exactly that. Good defense by the former attackman. Either way, it comes back up to Davis. He gets down to his left hand, shoots and scores. Davis with a dodge from up top, so they recycle it, able to get to the left hand. What yeah. happened there for the Tufts defense? It, it looks like they just didn't recover, because uh, they did send a slide off Kip when he went down the alley, um, and Duke Alf, being an offensive player, he probably doesn't know the defensive recoveries as well, which left a wide open lane then for, was it that, was that Davis who scored? That's right, Brian Davis yeah. right there on the goal. Yeah, and, and a great shot by Davis too. He really tucked that corner. It looked like Garzone was almost asking him to go far side, but a better shot. Yeah, so 13 to seven, Dutchman. Parker Merrill once again, he just cannot be stopped at the faceoff X. Yeah. Only player hotter probably is Dan Donahue. Yep. But it's all for nothing if this Tufts offense can't get it going. Exactly. You know, I, I want to see more from Boyden. He had a great first quarter. It really hasn't dodged as much uh, throughout the rest of the game. He really needs to get back involved. Bradle over to Kelleher. Yeah, and as you said, here's Kelleher on his left hand. Excuse me, slips for a moment, gets right back up. Kelleher over to Tagliaferri. Yeah, as you've said... Boyden with that beautiful behind the back goal in the first quarter, but we haven't seen anything from him since. That pass goes past him. Edelman oh, nearly uh. manages to keep it in the offensive half, and he does. Beautiful job from Edelman. Draws the foul from Fry there. Yeah, a little clarification there. Like in basketball, the over and back rule, you cannot bring the ball back over the midline if you have possession past the 60 second mark in the shot clock. So an intelligent play there by Edelman to kick it over. Feed inside from Boyden. Kelleher can't quite handle it. And it is Belush who comes up with it. Belush, he does manage to grab the ground ball in the end. Knocked away from him not once, but twice. And the Jumbos do get it back with Boyden. Yeah, with, over to Bradle. With Donahue playing so well, they're really packing in this Union defense. Bradle to Alf for the step down with his right hand. Bounced it right in front of Dan Donahue. Uses the turf here at Bello. And that's a much needed goal for the Jumbos. You know, if, and if anyone's been you know, confidently shooting against Donahue. It's been Duke Alf. Duke's got three goals today already. Uh, he's a tall player, can really get a lot of mustard behind it, and he's shooting intelligently. I think a lot of these tough shooters have been shooting high, and Donahue's been locked down. Right there, Alf tests him in the wickets, and he gets through. Yeah, a great bounce shot there from Alf. So with 3.31 left in the third quarter, Parker Merrill about to win another faceoff, and he does. This time, Burns stays, or excuse me, Pilato stays with him well and is able to cause the turnover. Another win for Barker Merrill, but Pilato creates the turnover, and he'll have the last laugh here. Hey, right, well, now he's pushing hard. He is, we know he can run in transition. He tries to feed it inside, gets absolutely popped, and Joey Waldbaum, who I haven't, said, haven't said his name much yet in this half, but he comes away with it, pushing in transition. Good pass down to Swank. Swank in front to Bradle. Bradle tucks it away. Maybe that'll get him going, Kyle. Oh, yeah, and that's the running gun that the Jumbos love to do. Union's played great in transition defense so far, but a look like that 
Waldbaum with the great play on defense to bring it up, find Swank, Swank over to Bradle, and listen, Bradle's had shooting struggles today, but if he misses that, you really know something's up. Yeah, you know you're in trouble if he misses the doorstep right on the crease. Yeah, and Not even Donahue could rob him there. That's a big one for the psychological aspect, especially with Bradle. Uh, he's a very emotional player, so look for Bradle to get some confidence there. Pilato able to win the faceoff this time. Or, excuse Burn. me, Burn able to win the faceoff yeah, this time. I, I really like how Union alternates their faceoff men. They both have different strengths. Pilato can really push it. Burns a little more hard-nosed on the ground balls. Uh, even though Merrill's been playing well, I think it still benefits Union to have two guys like that. Yeah, it definitely does. Here's McGovern on the offensive end. Union with a needed possession because they want to stop some of this tough momentum. Here's Kip. And Murtha guarding Davis. Timmons guarding Kip. Looks like they'll attack Murtha here. Davis does get to his right hand. Looking to go across the top. Good footwork there by Murtha. Yeah, beautiful defense by Murtha there. Really showing you how to keep someone out of the center of the field. McCann now operating down low. Good defense by Waldbaum. Double comes. He's able to swim through it. McCann, so good job by McCann. McCann really uses his body well to protect the stick. Yeah, he's a big guy, tall. Cross-handed shot from Davis goes wide. Backed up by Burns. 27 on the shot clock. Two minutes remaining in the third quarter. As the Union Dutchman look to add on to their four-goal lead. Edelman with a good check against Burns. Burns spins inside once more. This time he gets absolutely lit up by Trevor Hall. That's what you like to see on the defensive end for the Jumbos. Yep, they're going to call him in the crease. And now, you know, Burns scored in a very similar goal, and so did McGovern on that inside roll dodge. This time Hall has had enough. Really took it to him. Yeah, you would have to say Union has been the more physical team so far. They're not. But that's definitely a change. Union bench is furious as a potential offside is missed. Yeah, they call it. But they do end up calling it from the far side. So Union gets it back, and that's an uncharacteristic yeah. mistake from the Jumbo. Tufts usually looks to balance the field with their far side short stick midfielder if a long pole takes it over. That time, Tim was just a little bit late getting back on to the defensive side. And, you know, any, uh, any college coach is going to see that and have a fit if the ref doesn't call it. Yeah, and there's another error. Sturm trying his best to get off the field before the referees noticed. He is not able to, and another bad mistake by Fry. Either way, the flag is down, so that will just start the man up opportunity early. But Fry just bobbling the pass for no reason, spilling it back over the midline. I would say that this is a crucial man up opportunity here. You know, a four goal game I think is manageable, especially the way that Tufts can play on offense. But a five goal game, if they can take advantage here, that really puts you into kind of panic mode. Um, and you can't really play panic mode against a goalie like Donahue. So this is a huge, huge possession for the Jumbo's man down defense. They really need to protect those bottom corners, which were exploited on the first man up from the Dutchman. Yeah, we saw some good feeds from Davis earlier. We'll see. Here he is up top again. Uh, we'll see if he can make something happen once more. Back over to Burns. Davis up top. Over to McCann. McCann to Fry. They're looking for that back door. Fry with a shot, knocked down, scooped up by Waldbaum. Gets hacked by Davis. No call. Over to Matt Lane. Jumbos have numbers. Jumbos do have numbers. Matt Lane able to hold to it. Good stick protection from Matt Lane, and he scores! The long ball is fired up. The bench is fired up. Everyone loves it. If anything can change momentum, it is a man down goal. Matt Lane said, well, if you don't slide to me, I'll just take a free one. And look at that. He beats Donahue, and wow. That, that is really a momentum shifter. And as you said, changing planes from all the way up top with the pole to down low, bottom left corner, Matt Lane with a huge goal for the Jumbos. And as you said, four goal game to a three goal game, a lot more manageable than if the Union Dutchman had managed to capitalize yeah. on that man up opportunity yeah, to make you know, it a five goal I game. I was just saying, keep it at four, didn't realize that the, uh, the option was to cut it to three on the man down. Yeah, so the penalty also releases and the Union Dutchman looked to get an opportunity. Great play by Kyle Edelman, preventing an, a goal-scoring opportunity there. It's a big there. ground ball here. It is. Burns goes down. Bodies are flying left and right, and Burns does come up with it, but it's checked away by Waldbaum. A beautiful check from Joey Waldbaum. Turns it over. Yep, some Whistle. problems with the clock here. They kind of let it run a little too long uh, when, the, when the ball was stopped. So look for, look for them to adjust it probably to 22 seconds for the Jumbos, which as we know from all season, that's more than enough time to score. More than enough time to score indeed. Right in front of the box, Cam Kelleher and Taglia Ferry ready to come on. So a great defensive possession there for the Jumbos. A little bit discombobulated at first, but great individual plays. And it's oh. thrown away by Edelman. Here's Burns. 
Burns over to McKinn and looks like the Union College Dutchman instead of the Jumbos will be getting the last possession of this quarter. Seven on the clock, McCann spinning through one, two, three, Jumbos gets a shot away somehow. Connor Garzon looks to have the backup. No, he does not. Burns gets the call. So 1.6 left on the clock. That was a valiant effort by McCann. Burns swings it in front over the stick of fry and that'll end the third quarter. 13 Union, 10 jump Tufts as we go to our fourth and final quarter here at Mellow Field. Man, it sure has been, as I've said before, hectic in the center of the field, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, it really has. Um, good, you know, I would say that the Jumbo's cleared pretty well there besides that last possession. Um, but that, that really isn't what's been driving this game anymore. It's been getting quality offensive looks, which they did in that third quarter. I would say that there was the their best quarter of the game by far. They um, certainly did. You know, Donahue is still making some unbelievable saves. Yes, he is. But with the quality of looks that his defense is giving up, it's just a matter of time before Tufts is going to tuck some of these away. Yeah, and I think mixing it up too, getting a guy like Alf involved, who's got three on the night, uh, just throwing different looks at this Union defense. They can't stop everything, right? And they've done a great job. All respect to the Union Dutchman D. However, if you keep throwing things at this defense, especially with the players that the Jumbos have on offense, you got to think something's going to stick. Yeah, and Alf's jersey ripped wide open. Don't know exactly when that happened, but either way, just a testament to how physical this game has been. Certainly here has on a been. cold night at Bellow. Can't feel good to get hit on this turf, huh? Nope. <laughs> I've been hit on this turf. It's not not great. Yeah. <laughs> so, for and the fourth... I would say, sorry, Joe, to cut you Go off ahead. there, but another storyline um, that could really work for the Jumbos is Parker Merrill at the faceoff X. He has been dominating. I'm going to check the stats here real quick. Merrill is, you know, he's 17 uh, faceoff wins today to Union's nine. So Merrill's been hot, and if the Jumbo shots can start to fall a little more consistently, these possessions are going to be ever more important. Yeah, definitely can't want anything more from the freshman. He's showed that you know, on his own or with Aiden Hesse, he can really get it done at the X. And today he's getting it done on his own. Okay, so because Duke Alf's jersey ripped, he will be wearing 52. Um, just keep an eye out for that. So, after a violation, Sam Stern will pick it up for the Jumbos as they look to get something going in this fourth quarter. They'll definitely want to start this one well. A little, little traffic up top there. Yeah, Boyden able to evade it all. He's got a short stick now. Boyden definitely will look to take advantage of this matchup with Titus. Titus a tough defender, but Boyden can go at anyone, especially a short stick. Boyden gets the middle of the field, beaten away by Donahue, yeah. backed up by Swank. And I get that Boyden had the short stick in Titus, but Titus is a really good defender. I think forcing something against him, you know, that really wasn't a threatening shot. Donahue made an easy save. Either way, it will reset the shot clock to 60 for the Jumbos. Here's Tagliaferri against Titus again. Nearly knocked down. Titus stays with him. Good He's defense strong. so far. Tagliaferri tries to shoot off his hip, but there's nothing there. And man, I just have to question whether this is the right matchup for the Jumbos to attack. No, it's not. They definitely should not be attacking. And by the way, what a hustle there by Donahue on the run out. He's done that a few times today. You know, not only is he saving the ball, he's saving possession for his team. That is the ultimate goalie play. Yeah, we're seeing great field awareness from him. Good catch by Davis. Absolutely blown up by Matt Lane. Great play from Matt Lane, number 16 for the Jumbos, the long stick midi. And it looks like Union got the timeout away before the ball went oh. out of bounds. I tell you what, Coach Witherford for Union might be the best timeout caller in the game. He's had a few that have really saved the Dutchman from some sticky situations. Yeah, definitely. Davis in all sorts of trouble right there. Matt Lane stuck to him like glue to speak of something sticky. <laughs> and so the 13-10 lead for Union remains intact off a save from Donahue and a great, some great defense by Titus. I tell you what, though, the momentum is slowly swinging in the Jumbo's favor. They've done a much better job on their ride, uh, as we just saw there. And in, in terms of the ground ball battle, I think they're doing a better job as well. The defense is causing turnovers. You know, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how Union continues to attack the Jumbo's defense. Will they sag off a little bit because they have a lead? Will they try to beat the clock? I, I would advise against that at this point in the game, but who knows? Yeah, still 14 minutes remaining, and we know that Tufts, if there ever was a team that could score 20 goals in 14 minutes, it would be Tufts. Exactly. But either way, it doesn't look likely tonight, but you never know. Yeah, you really don't. I think that, 
you know, for the Jumbo's offense, I think keep it with the midfield, but don't dodge Titus, right? They've got, you know, they've got Demuccio in the field, number 17 for Union. Alf has had his way with Demuccio so far. I think you want to attack those matchups. And then I think uh, get Boyden involved as well. Boyden needs to be dodging more. Yeah, so they do get Gray Humphrey in there, number 39, instead of Demuccio. Yeah. Probably a smart okay, switch yeah. there for the Union. Maybe they're listening to me. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, an intelligent decision there. Uh, it will be number 21, Shane Smith in there, giving Titus a break. Taglio Ferry looks to operate against him. They'll definitely want to look on, to dodge on the short sticks here. Yep. Give it to Alf. He's been hot. Here's Alf, now number 52. It doesn't look as good as him. No, it doesn't quite, but he'll make it work, I'm sure. Taglia Ferry to his left hand. Quick dodge. Shot with the right. Goes wide, and it looks like Tufts does not get the backup. Alf was there, but they do give it to Baglisi. So Union turns it over with a great runout yeah. once more. You know, usually the runouts don't amount to much, but Union has certainly made them a strong part of their defense. That's around four or five times now that they've salvaged possession. Yeah, and as we've just seen today, Union is just a really disciplined team. Yeah, they are. They What a pass. Yeah. And here's Fry right in front of the net. 101 Garzone, and he scores. Fry's not going to miss that one. Uh, Kid. They do a great job once more breaking the 10 man ride. The long pass from Davis, and it creates a wide open 101 opportunity. Yeah, you know, the Jumbos have they've really been successful riding this year because teams could not make that pass. But as Davis shows, you know, when you have a good team, a disciplined team, they can make those passes. And I think Coach Denolfo maybe should readjust his strategy a little bit on the ride especially as they start to play better teams, going towards the playoffs. You know, Union's showing that they're capable of beating this ride, not only beating it, but exploiting it. Yeah, so back to the face-off X. Parker Merrill tied up by Byrne, but does a great job to shield him off. Good box and out. And Lewis Timmons is able to get the ground ball. So Timmons down the field. He's a football pushes player. Off against, oh, right down below. <laughs> nearly a bad pass. Bradle does a great job to handle it. Timmons nearly got a little overeager there, but they will get it to Boyden and get a possession. Oh. But a pass goes awry from Boyd and Swank can't bring it in. And they'll turn it over. So yeah. Titus here scoops it up. Another theme of the game, stick skills and sloppy turnovers. I said they're going to have to avoid those. A good ride, though, by Swank, making up for his mistake. And he pushes Titus out of bounds. Bradle has it, bringing it in. Passes to Timmons, and Timmons can't bring it in. So another oh. turnover. And yeah. here's Gort. Those are simply opportunities you cannot miss if you're the Jumbos down four right now. Yeah, and it looks like wisely... Union chooses to slow it down with Burns and Fry. Gordo able to clear it there. Whistles go. Unclear what the call is as the substitutions go through. Murtha coming onto the field, as well as Matt Lane. Lewis Timmons will stay out there. So 66 on the shot clock for Union to operate with. Here's Peter Kipp against Murtha. Over to McGovern, and this time McGovern draws the pole. Here's Brian Davis against Timmons. This looks like the matchup they want to attack. Timmons pushes him down the alley, but Davis gets inside. See, see Walbaum came with the slide there, and he actually did use the body, but I still don't think it's quick enough. You can't let those shots get, you know, get towards your net. Yeah, not a great shot there from Davis, but it certainly could have been better. He was in a lot of space after beating Timmons. This time, Timmons being dodged on again by Fry. This is a big matchup for Fry. He gets to his left hand, shoots, and scores. 15 to 10 to Union, with 11:58 remaining in the fourth quarter and the game. Yeah, a bit know, of a run here for Union. A bit of a run and a bit of a timely run, too, to quell the Jumbo's momentum, which we thought was going to carry them to making this game a little closer. But it's the theme of the Jumbo's defense and the Union offense getting to the middle of the field. Um, and, you know, especially when you re-dodge, get a few dodges and make the defense move around, it's more difficult to send a man to slide there. But if I'm defensive coordinator Stephen Toomey, I'm really focusing on that in practice next week. Yeah, and this is really going to test the mental toughness of these jumbos. Certainly. It's cold, it's tough, the game is physical, a couple flags fly there. Looks like Tufts will get a timely man-up opportunity yep. and that, as Parker Merrill wins another face-off. I'm very, very impressed by Parker Merrill. Not only is he facing off well, he's facing off tough. Uh, I think part of his problems early on in the season, he wasn't able to be tough enough on these ground balls, but he's shown really great physicality, and right there it gets rewarded. Another huge man-up opportunity for the Jumbos. Yeah, so what do you think they can look for here? We've seen the step-down from Alf. 
Um, surely the yeah, union defense well, will be a little more aware this so time. So it looks like the union man down is kind of favoring the bottom half of the offense, unlike the Tuss man down unit. So I think outside shots, maybe look for Swank. He's got a huge right-handed shot. Oh, wow, they're locking off Mac Bradle, it looks like. Yeah, I don't want his feeding to be nasty. So it's, it's a 5 on 4 basically. Yeah, we'll see if Tufts can exploit it. Here's Alf. Over to Boyden. Boyden thinks about the shot. Pressured well by Puglisi. Bradle locked off by the short stick. Back over to Alf. Keller can't bring it in. He may be able to save it from going out of bounds. He is not. No. That's another costly mistake for the Jumbos. Yep, that's, that's been the story of the offense. Or at least in this half. I think Donahue was... Donahue was the story of Tufts' shooting was in the first half, but this half, it's really been turnovers that are uncharacteristic if you've watched this team all season. Yeah, it has, and Union is able to break the ride once more. So here's Burns. Look for Edelman to maybe try to make something happen on the defensive end. We got Fry now. Yeah, Eddinghausen got caught on defense. That is not where he's comfortable. No, it is not, and as you've said before, not the biggest guy, certainly not. All right, well, we got 13 on 13. <laughs> but they do not look to exploit it, which is interesting. Here's McGovern down the alley against his friend Mirtha. Shoots, maybe shot. We'll call it a bounce pass. Sure. Gets to McCann. You're being generous, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> They'll swing it back up top to Kip. This time they're going to attack Eddinghausen, as they probably should. Oh, But Eddinghausen <laughs> manages to put the ball on the ground. Hey. Peter Kip will not be happy with that one. Sometimes you just need some fresh faces. <laughs> yeah. So Eddinghausen, a great first cameo on defense. Here's McCann, he'll attack against Mirtha. McCann still has a height advantage here, tall guy. He gets around, gets topside, shoots, backed up by Burns. 12 on the shot clock for the Union Dutchman, a better defensive something, possession for the Cowboys. Something Jumbos. Mirtha does really well on an odd mall defense is affecting the shot. You know, maybe he lets that shot get taken, but he affects it hard. Yeah, and there's really not much more you can ask for from a short stick D midi. And that's a great possession for the Jumbos right there. Yes. Eddinghausen caught on defense, manages to put the ball on the ground. Mirtha standing up strong against McCann, and the Jumbos turn it over. I would great say pass. it is do or die time for the Jumbos right now. This possession is critical. Here's Matt Lane. He's already scored once today. Gets a little over eager and nearly turns it over. Yeah. Cam Kelleher with just a tough ground ball, but he's being put in a tough spot by his teammates. And here's Puglisi now. You know, I, I hate to be critical of like a team's energy or effort level, but it really looks like Union is flying around way more than the Jumbos. Lane kind of got caught in no man's land there. You know, I, I really think that the, you know, the Union Dutchman came out fired up for this game. Maybe didn't like that they were underdogs, didn't like all the press that the Jumbos were getting. But yeah. they have certainly been attacking the ground balls, attacking the runouts, attacking the stick checks, and it's, it's paid off a lot. Yeah, here's Zach Davis now. And Waldbaum's got the short stick now on D. Waldbaum does have a short stick now on D, so we'll see what he can make happen, either in transition and on defense. Interesting decision there by the Tufts coaching staff. Davis tries to shoot. It's knocked down by Edelman. Okay, Edelman's knocked down a few shots today. He's really good at getting a stick in there. He's definitely not afraid to put either his stick or body on the line. Davis has it once more, guarded by Eimer, who we haven't seen too much of in the second half, to be fair. Well, there's been a lot of transition for Union personnel. Definitely. Here's Del Cristo now. Del Cristo, Donahue dodges on him. Pass inside to Burns, and Burns tucks it away. Great pass from Donahue. Just a little bit too much space. They're finding that soft spot in the yeah. center of the Tufts defense. Yeah, Burns, man. He's been the MVP of this Union offense. He's doing it off the dodge. He's doing it off ball, and just a great shot. Yeah, so it's certainly never say die for this Tufts offense. We know how fast they can heat up, but they're going to need to heat up really fast here if they want to get something going. Down six with 8.44 left in the second in the, in the game. Yeah. Parker Merrill is able to win a faceoff, so that's big for Tufts. Yeah, they're gonna he's going to get return. mobbed. <laughs> yeah, they're going to need Tim to return to his winning ways if they're going to get back into this one. Here's Garzon now. They need a big clear here. Garzon back over to Edelman. Six seconds left to clear, and they'll do it with no problem yep. over to Trevor Hall. Yeah, it looks like the second midfield for the Jumbos is coming in. Let's see if they can mix it up a little bit. Um, you know, there really haven't been great offensive looks in this quarter. A lot of turnovers, sloppiness. No, there have not. Here's Cole Salton. He's going to look to make something happen down the right-handed alley. Passes back to Bradle. Bradle has the defense hung up. This is a great opportunity for the Jumbos. He'll swing it back out to Boyden, opting not to wait. 
Time is of the essence. Boyden from his oh. backside once more. And man, he just can get his shot away from any angle, any position, no matter what is happening. He will score it in somehow, some way. Oh my god. Jack Boyden is on X Games mode today. I mean, it seems like he prefers scoring from unconventional angles. If there were style points involved, Boyden would be the nation's leading scorer. I mean, just what a play. The type of individual effort that just goes to show you how skilled some of these Tufts attackmen are. And that's his hat trick for today. He's scored two from his backside now, one behind the back. Parker Merrill nearly gets tripped up. If he'd gone down there, a flag might have flown. Yeah, Either way, fair play from the freshman. Hey, it's, you know, a little bit of make it, take it lacrosse there with, with uh, Merrill in the zone so far. Trevor Hall looking a little bit Just uncomfortable the there. Double team. Pressured by Gordo. You don't want to see long Oof. pole against snug pole. But Trevor Hall, oh my goodness. He just is staying with this ground ball. And he is able to. No one wants it. They're all playing hockey. Goosed around by Boyden and eventually picked up by Fry. Amazing, or excuse me, not Fry. Here's Fry now. It was Humphrey who picked it up. But Union does get a much needed possession. That's costly for the Jumbos. And, you know, like I said, it's kind of been the energy factor, especially in the middle of the field. Um, who picked up that ground ball? Humphrey. Humphrey. What a great play by him. I mean, really, that just goes to show you how engaged they are, how locked in Coach Whitaford has these Dutchmen. Yeah, here's Peter Kipp over to Davis. Man, it looks like they're going to slow up their offense even more. They certainly are. Looking to kill out this clock with their six-goal lead. Although, Keep that lead. I have to say... While we expected the Union offense to be a little slower, they've actually ran at a pretty good pace. Yeah, they definitely have. Haven't been afraid to McCann dodge. McCann from up top, swings it down. McCann once more. Looks like the Jumbo's in some kind of, a little bit of a change to their defense. It does get Union out of their rhythm, and they throw it away. So Edelman will scoop it up off the end line as Tufts looks to set up a clear here. They really need a possession here. Salton back onto the field. He's open, and he'll get the ball. Salton right down the middle of the field. They're coming out the defense with pace. Shot Ooh. turned away by Donahue. Low shot. That's a, that's a really good look by Salton, and they do need to attack quickly. This time, better hustle from the Jumbos. Swank puts a body on, but no one comes up with the ball for now. Ayers is in there as well with his pull, and the ball goes out of bounds. Good hustle by the Jumbos yep. this time, and they'll get the ball back. That's the kind of energy they need to have. Certainly is. Oh, but oh. it's thrown away. Uh, they'll still be able to fight for it. Nope, good, good play there. Yeah, big yeah. scrum in front of the Union bench. Yeah, that's a great play by Shane Smith, knowing that it came off the Jumbo's player just to box it out and let that ball roll. Yeah, effort from Joey Waldbaum, but it wasn't enough. And just no one was looking in the direction of, uh, of Bredo when he threw that pass. Here's Fry. He will opt to slow it down as they're trying to kill the clock here. Swings it back up to Kip. 540 remaining in the fourth quarter. Kip up top. He'll draw Sturm. And now back to Fry. Edelman now guarding. Fry on the wing. Here's Kip. And McCann. McCann against Ayers. Hacked on by Ayers. Back up top to Green. Green tries to step down, but sends it well wide and well over the bar. Good check there by Ayers. Affect that shot really well. Yeah, 40 remaining on the shot clock for the Dutchman. Zach Davis is out there as well. Peter Kip now. Kip against Murtha, gets to his right hand. Murtha stays with him. Green against Ayers. Green's pass a little bit low, and Burns is not able to come up with it, but great hustle play to get it to Zach Davis. <laughs> Hall is Zach playing Davis lots slipping of aggression. all over the place. Chased down by Matt Lane, 15 on the shot clock. Dutchman looking to make something happen. McCann here against Ayers, gets to his left hand. Ayers with a beautiful V-hold to keep him out. McCann somehow holds onto the ball, finally loses wow. it. Great defense from Ayers, great defense by the Jumbos, but 80 seconds do go off the clock. Coach Dinolfo has a special one here in Michael Ayers as a freshman, just showing so much poise. Edelman zips it down below, but it's knocked out of the air by Belushi. Mm. Yeah, another bad passing transition by the Jumbos. I don't know if it's the cold or if they're underestimating Union's ability to get in these passing lanes, but either way, it's been... You know, transition's been uncharacteristically ineffective today. Boyden able to knock down Davis, however, and Bradle will get it back on offense. He fakes, gets Davis up in the air, spins it back outside, and another <sighs> poor pass. <sighs> you know, this is really... Yeah, I have, I've not seen Mac Bradle play like this in a while. Um, yeah, wow. Yeah, he'll certainly need to bounce back from this one. You know, it looks, looks like, like... It just looks like he's not playing naturally. 
you know, kind of forcing passes, um, forcing passes to personnel that maybe aren't ready for it. You know, Del Cristo is a great player. Don't get me wrong, but he's not an offensive midfielder. If you're going to zip a pass at him like that, it has to be on the money. Yeah, we're definitely seeing a few ill-advised passes from Bradle, to say the least. Either way, 4:04 remaining in the game, 16 to 11. So a five-goal lead. Yeah. Tufts will need to make something happen, and they'll need to make it happen very soon. Well, they do have face-offs going for them right now. So if you're Coach Tanolfo, you really got to think about attacking quickly and then putting all your effort into these face-offs to retain possession. Um, you know, and if I'm drawing up some offensive plays, I want to get Alf open, I want to get Boyden open, I want to get Kelleher open. I think those three guys right now are shooting the hottest. Um, and they possess just the most amount of poise at the moment to really attack the net. So yeah. let's see what they do here. Shout out to Union, though. They've been playing really good defense. We've been talking about Donahue all day, but guys like Puglisi, guys like um, Belouche have really been locking down and either forcing turnovers or just playing hard-nosed, tough style across. And it certainly affected the Jumbos more than I thought it would. Yeah, Puglisi especially having a great game guarding Bradle the entire game. And then Titus, obviously, we've said his name a number of times today, but it can't be said enough how much his defensive midfield presence has helped this team. Yep, definitely. Titus is, uh, I think defensive midfield is a generally overlooked position in lacrosse. Uh, guys like Titus on Union, Murtha on Tufts, these guys are really the heartbeat of the team. They get ground balls, they can push in transition. So good defensive midfield play is crucial, especially if you want to make a deep run in May. Yeah, so here's Fry. Back over to Burns. Tufts not really pressuring out on the ball yet. Not too much urgency yet. Burns. Yeah. Oh, Edelman on him. Let's see if Edelman can make something happen. He is doubled there, but he's able to evade it. Slide comes from Lane. Yeah, that's, that's a smart double team. You know, get him off the pick so you can really converge on the attack. Man, Burns is super speedy, though. He definitely is, and he was able to get very, around at that time. Very elusive. Uh, very impressed by Burns. Here's McGovern now on a short stick. That short stick is Sturm. He beats him to the inside. Passes down to Fry. Fry one more to McCann, and McCann could not handle it. So a bit of a miscue for the Union offense this time. That'll give Tufts a lifeline here with yeah. 309 remaining in the game. But they did bleed the clock a little bit. So if you want to draw a positive from that possession, yeah, played the clock well. There definitely have been a lot of positives for Union. I, I think an adjustment that the Jumbos need to make right now is getting these defensive personnel off. Like I understand they like to keep them on. Bradle with a good pass inside, and Boyden tucks it away. Yep. So it didn't matter what happened in the substitution no, it game. Didn't. It didn't. The Bradle to Boyden <laughs> connection is alive and well, at least for now. And those are the goals that we see. We've, we have seen tough score all season, attacking early, making creative off-ball cuts. Uh, Bradle obviously has the vision. Boyden obviously has the finishing skills. So, you know, in terms of the style of lacrosse they want to play, it's the it's what they've been doing all year, and they just showed you they can. Um, yeah, and a great play from Bradle there. Tough game for him, but great pass there. Yep. And then a quiet four goals from Boyden today. <laughs> yeah, maybe the the uncharacteristic normal goal. Yeah. <laughs> Man, and McCann maybe able to pick it up to win the faceoff. Oh, but Burns misses probably his easiest shot of the day. Yeah. Just a sitter right over the top of the net. He does manage to back it up, so that's big for Union. Yep. That's definitely not the way the Tufts would have wanted the face-off to go. Yeah, and there's about two shot clocks left worth of game here. Edelman getting physical, though, on Burns. He puts him on the ground, takes his stick away, and Edelman doing what he does best, causing the turnover there, giving Tufts another chance, oh. but he immediately throws yeah. it away as Donahue intercepts the pass. Yep, you know, and that's been the story of the game. Tufts does something very well, either makes a great defensive play or a great transition pass, but then the next play, you know, they can't capitalize. They can't keep, a, keep the momentum going. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't want to speak too soon, but looks like the Jumbos are going to lose their first game of the season. Yeah, so with a four-goal deficit with 2.19 remaining, it would take something special to come back here. Yeah, I don't want to count them out yet. You know, we know how fast they can score. So We do. Union has the ball with, about, with nearly a full shot clock remaining. So another timeout taken by Union. I think, I think you have to double the ball and then put Garzon on the offensive player behind the net. Yeah. It's really the only solution they can, they can do to get the ball quickly. Um, Edelman, I would put Edelman on the ball for sure. He's their best 
uh, turnover creator. Yeah, they'll have to be careful to contain whoever it is who picks up the ball for Union, especially if, it, if it's Burns. We know he has the pace to beat a double team. Yeah, I think, um, they, I think they give the ball to Burns or McCann. I mean, he's big. Yeah, he is. We've seen great stick protection from McCann. Yeah. Managing to get through three, four jumbos at a time. Or McGovern, too. Uh, you know, McGovern, McGovern's a horse with the ball. They certainly have a wealth of options, but the jumbos will, as you said, probably have to double the ball, try to create a turnover as soon as possible. And then once they create the turnover, be smart in transition. Yeah. Edelman, I understand Edelman needs to push the ball down, but that pass, right, it's just... Exactly. You know, Does it need to be a 40-yard what, pass? What good is creating the turnover if you can't move it up the field? Yeah, definitely. All right, so who's going to start awareness, with this? Clock awareness key for both teams here. It looks like number two, Titus, will pick it up. Oh, for, wow. That just shows the trust they have in that kid. Yeah, I mean, he's athletic, he's fast, and he can run for days. So here he goes. He tries to swim through the double. It's yeah. put on the ground by the jumbos, though. Trevor Hall manages to get it. Good ground ball by Hall. No, that's, shows that's lane. Oh, ex excuse me. Either way, <laughs> he goes down. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That is Lane. Yeah, you couldn't draw it up better if you're the Jumbo's defense, forcing yeah. the turnover immediately. Exactly how they would have wanted to go. Mm. Oh, there spills the pass. Lane wants there once more to cover for him. Matt Lane has really had a great game today, hasn't he? Here he is, trying to avoid the ride. He has to give it up to Garzone. So yeah. Union's locking off all the passing options. And something is called. The Jumbos went offsides. Jumbos offsides. Costly turnover once more. And Union gets it back. So with the ride once more, they make it count when it, when it has to. Yep. And now Garzone's out of the net. It's really yeah. desperation time for the Jumbos. Humphrey over to Green. Green tries to force it back inside. Lane nearly picks it off again. Lane Green gets it back. Lane is flying over the field right now. Yeah. He's not willing to give up yet. He's showing a lot of fight here, a lot of toughness. Here's Trevor Hall now guarding Garzone against against Burns. Only one way that matchup was going to go. Yeah, don't sleep on Gar Garzone's athleticism. Oh, oh, my goodness. Burns feeds it in front of Fry, and Fry manages to hit the crossbar on a wide open net, which actually might work out better for Union. Well, it'll reset, it reset the, shot, the clock. shot clock. Wow. And they now have 54 seconds on the clock with only 65 seconds left in the game. I guarantee you Fry is telling his teammates on the bus ride home he did that on purpose. Yeah, he meant to do that one, didn't he? Either way. Titus has it now for, for Union as they look to run out the rest of this game. And it's looking like it's going to be an undefeated Union team staying undefeated here in Bellow with their first huge test of the year. Yeah. I got to say, Union looked like the better team. They looked like the more physical team. They looked like the team that was willing to hustle more. Uh, granted, Donahue played amazing in net. They definitely did. And Davis adds one yeah. more for the Union Dutchman. But but just to continue what I was saying, great that Donahue played amazing in that, and that maybe deterred the Jumbos a little bit, maybe frustrated them. However, Union deserved to win this game. Regardless of Donahue's play, they deserved to win this game. Coach Sinolfo and the Jumbos will definitely see this as a setback, but it's certainly a learning opportunity. They did not play to their capacity at all. The stick skills weren't there, the shooting wasn't there, and the defense was a little bit soft. Um, in the middle of the field. So there are definitely things to learn for the Jumbos. Big win for Union. Big win for their program as a whole. You know, this is a program that's been on the rise of recent in this Liberty League that is very competitive. And for them to get a top three win just goes to show what Kevin Whitford's doing in the Schenectady, New York. Yeah, Coach Whitford has to be very happy with this one. He drew up a game plan for his team, and they executed it to perfection. Yep. I mean, just so much discipline from their team. Yeah. Great discipline in the ride as Donahue goes down hard. Good ground ball this time from Puglisi, and he'll fling it towards the open net. Oh, nearly puts it away about a meter wide from Puglisi from about 80 yards out. It is backed up by Burns, so that'll probably be the game. Yep. The Dutchmen are livid on the sideline. They are ready to go get that goalie, the oh. MVP of the game. I'll say it. Donahue. <laughs> and Donahue. His teammates love it. They love him. He played a great game for Union overall. Just a hugely disciplined, yeah. tough game from the Union yeah. Dutchman. Yeah, this is Tufts' first regular season loss since 2019. Um, you know, Coach Donolfo can definitely use this as motivation. I don't think that this loss is all bad. There's certainly lessons that can be learned. Um, certainly adjustments that need to be made. I think it starts with the ride. Right, they've been riding super hard against teams like Colby and, and, and others and Trinity. 
But against a team like Union who can throw the ball around, they've shown that they can beat it and exploit it. And then in terms of um, the offensive play, just got to clean up the sticks. And that and that's not characteristic of the yeah. Jumbos whatsoever. Yeah, so Union comes to Bellow and comes away with a 17-12 to victory over the number three Tufts Jumbos, remaining undefeated. I'm Joe Schmidt here with Kyle Amate, signing off from Bellow. Oh.